What is going on guys? Welcome to another beautiful day here in Hawaii. Very excited for today because we're gonna do something I've never showed you guys before on my channel. I've done this before, but I've never made a video about it. We're out here at some rocks here. As you can see, it's low tide, and uh, so there are a lot of nice tide pools and stuff bursting with minnows and little fish. And I have with me today a net. So we're gonna try to catch some some of these minnows, some live bait, and then my dad and I are going to get the kayak and we're gonna head out probably about a mile out on the kayak with our live bait and we're gonna drop it down over the reefs and stuff and see what crazy reef fish we can catch with the live bait. All right guys, this is always easier said than done, <laughs> catching minnows in a net like this. Um, cannot use cast nets in Hawaii. Well, you can't use a cast net, but they have to be a certain size and the size is so big, um, it's, not, it's no bait that, I'm, that I would use. But we're gonna try to sneak around to the opening of this big tide pool here. And uh, when the minnows try to swim out, you know, I don't know what we're doing here. We're just gonna try to catch some. <laughs> got two, <laughs> get my backpack out here. We got this, uh, this minnow thing here. Open up before a big wave comes, because when a big wave comes, they're gonna try to escape out of here. So I need to, uh, look, that's what we're after, those little silver minnows. I'll show you guys up close in a second. I gotta catch as many as I can while they're trapped. Got one. <laughs> look at this. This is crazy. Got like four or five in here. Whole bunch of them, guys. All right. Whoa, whoa, this is what we're after, guys. A little glass. Whoa, minnow right there. I got one. Oh, it's a big one. This is a prize. Might catch something huge on this. Guys, look, we caught a tiny goatfish. Let's look at catch of the morning so far. We have a whole bunch of little minners. Little glass minnows, they're called, and the little goatfish. So not too bad. I was hoping for a few more, but uh, this will make some good bait. This will be a good start. All right, guys, so we're down on the beach. My dad is with me. We have our kayak, and we're going to take these fish now. We're going to go out, and uh, let's get out there. Let's try to catch a good game fish on these. Guys, we are marveling at how clear it is out here. Just, what a gorgeous day. Very cool. All right guys, we found out something kind of sad here. In order to use the goatfish's bait, they have to be over eight inches. So we're gonna let this little guy go, which ah, this was the one this little guy was most excited about. But all goatfish on Maui have to be over eight inches to keep, so we're letting this little guy go. We were gonna, I was gonna wait till we get out there, but if we get way out there in like 40 feet of water and let him go, he'll probably get eaten on the way down. So we're letting him go in the shallower water. We still have these other fish. We'll, uh, we'll use the glass minnows. All righty, my friends. My dad said he wants to go octopus style, so he's gonna use a, the traditional chunk of octopus. I'm gonna grab one of these lively little fellows here. If I can get him in my hand, there we go. Look at that nice little silver fish right there. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to, the way this rig is set up, I'm actually going to go through like the back fin, even though fish bite the head first, and that will keep him alive longer. Like, just like so, and just, we're going to let this little guy down there, and uh, just on a simple bottom rig, let's see what, uh, what comes along. It looks like to me. Oh wait, I'm getting a bite. Wait, wait, you see that? Oh yeah. Oh shoot. Something, something just had it, guys. Something just, it was just like, kind of like weight. Or not, you know, it was just, ah, uh, yep, bait's gone. Oh, maybe he's swimming over to yours. You know, we're gonna try it, hooking this guy right behind the head this time. Because maybe by the reason why we, I wanted the, the fish to last for a long time, but if we're getting bites that fast, you know, within a minute or two of it being down there, um, then these uh, fish always bite the heads first. The, the current though, I mean yesterday that current was really oh, weird. Was oh, I just great, got a bite. But right now it's like there's nothing. Mm -hmm. My line is straight. Oh, oh look. Mm -hmm. Yep, you see that? Something wants it. 
Got him. AC, you got, got him. One. Yes, guys, we got a good one. That's a good fish. That is a good fish. Let him, just let him run. There we go. Look at, we're going. Man. Guys, we guys. Going. Oh, man, this is exciting. This is insane. Oh, my on word. that minnow. Oh, my word. Guys, we got something big on. I'm going to loosen my drag just a little bit. We are clicking along, man. Pops, we got something really. I know we do. Guys, if my heart is pounding. Look, he's pulling our kayak. He is pulling. I mean, the, the, the bait bag is going behind us. Oh, my God. I just don't want there to be. I don't want to give him any slack, yeah. but I don't want to give him too much That's of it. Right. Yeah, yeah, let him. Oh, my word. Just keep the tension, baby. Keep uh -huh. the tension. Oh, man. This is what we came out here for, guys. Woo! It's been a while since I hooked up on a really big one. Do you see that rod? It is pulling. Guys, can you see this? It's pulling our kayak. I mean, the, the bait oh. bag is, is streaming behind We got something really good on. Oh, look at that. It's silvery or something. Oh, oh it is. Oh, it's a big ulua. It looks I, like I, I think this might be an ulua, guys. Is it a snapper? Because they look quite white. I'll get this one out of the way if we need to. Oh, there it is. Yeah, he's over there. Oh, I think that's a big bar jack or... No, I can't tell. No, no, Pops, that's a, that might, the fish is under our kayak. Whatever that is over there, you're looking at something else. Oh, my word. Oh, I think I guess I have a big. You do, you have an ulua. I can a big ulua. For sure. For sure. Oh. oh, look, there's bubbles coming up, man. Oh, I'm going to get my line out of the way. Yeah, if you could get yours. Oh, my He's just look at, look at how strong this fish is. Oh, my goodness, Pops. I might, guys, I think I might have a personal best on here. Oh, man, that was worth it, getting some live minnows. I'm looking for more just in case I should drop down, but I haven't seen any more. Oh, that is a beautiful. Oh, I my gosh, guys. I can see that on your camera. That is so cool. He's probably in 12 feet of water there, but you can see it. Oh, my word. Oh, my gosh. Ace, that is a pretty fish. Look at how strong that thing is. I mean, it's not. I thought it'd be like, you know, a 20 pounder or something like that based on how it was pulling right. our kayak. Right. And it's a sizable fish, but I thought it would be monstro. Oh, it snagged like under his chin. What? That's how, uh, that's why it's fighting so weird. Look how it snagged oh, under his chin. Sure Guys, look at this. Oh, come on, come on. It's a, it's a yellow spotted one too. Hold on. I'm gonna grab his, grab his tail. Hold your rock. Got him. Yes. Ooh, 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 got Guys. Right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think that was my personal best. That is, I'm pretty sure that is. Oh my oh, goodness. Man. Woo. And has a yellow spot on it, yellow spotted papillo. Uh, I think I, I'm saying it wrong. This is actually a papillo, not an ulua. I kind of get all the, I tend to think of all the ones from the Jack family as the same, but they're really not. Good grief, nice, guys, bro. look at that. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I need the knife out of there. I'm gonna kill him first before we put him in the bag. It's all right. You know what? I, I may end up. All right, guys. Look at that, barely fits in the fish bag. Woo. Oh man, that is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> Come out here, use minnows and catch a good game fish. It's great when a plan comes together. Guys, my dad has a fish on, fish on. Is it a good one? Well, I don't know. What is? Is that a big old trigger fish? Oh, it's a big old um, table boss. Oh, of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's with a yellow one though. I cannot believe how clear this water is. I can't believe how clear this water is. Oh, you left some more fish down there. There's some big, I can see some swimming. Oh, around. is that right? Uh -huh. yeah, look at that. That is a cool fish though, Pops. Those chompers. Nice one. Nice. Uh, well, if we were going to keep these, this would be a good size to keep. A big fish. No. That's pretty. That is beautiful. Man, the colors, that is so fun dropping down. Guys, you never uh -huh. know what you're going to catch out here. He's giving me all kinds of... Oh my, that careful, that dude's spiky too. Yeah. I'm just gonna grab him by the lip and throw him out. <laughs> there, he goes. there we go. Guys, guys, my dad and I were paddling to a different spot and he had his line out. While he had his line out, something just, oh, this is a good fish. Something almost took it out of the boat. When I look back, like your rod was double. Well, I had it, uh, this might be an uku. Um, I had it uh, doubled under my, uh, yeah, I think that's an uku. It's an uku? Yep. Nice. Oh, nice, guys. This is our other favorite fish to eat. Oh, he's not. He doesn't have the tail like yours does. No. Oh, he just spit. Oh my gosh, guys. He spit something in our boat. Wait till you see this. Here, you just get him in. 
Guys, look what the uku oh, just spit oh, up. Oh, that's your fish. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Woo. He just spit up. What is that? That's a... <laughs> that looks like a goat fish. He just ate that goat fish. We're going to lay that oh, chunk. My word. He spit that up and it flew right in the boat. I better have that bag because he's going to get oh, feisty goodness. here. And just nice think. catch. Paul. Yes. Oh, let me... Uh, I just don't want to lose him. Yes. Yep. Yep. Oh. oh, yeah. Like that. Oh, grab your rod. Yep. Oh, I've got it. How did he leapt out of the boat. He did leap out of the boat. Here, I'll oh, get you the knife. You can kill him first before you get him yeah. off the hook. Guys, this is our favorite. We got our two favorite oh, fish to man. eat, Pops. Nice job. Oh, my goodness. That's a record for catching those two great fish in, in that amount of time. Th that is a record. That's amazing. That is cool. Ooh. You want to hold that up? Oh, yeah. Guys, gray snapper. Uku. Our favorite. Nice job, Pops. Yes, indeed. What well, we've been fishing <laughs> like 10 minutes. <laughs> that's, that's all it took. To uh, catch, we go back and start cooking lunch if we wanted Heck to. Yeah, if we wanted, we, we, you know, we got to throw something down though. Just to yeah, we got to fish just a little bit more. That was that was too fast, and uh, but I we have our two keeper fish. Big old ray. Guys, guys, yeah. we're, we're going. We see a big ray on the bottom. Try throw your octopus down there and hook him. Oh, son. Yeah, no, it's a stingray. It's not a manta ray. It's a stingray. He'll eat eat bait. Yeah, guys, guys, let me try to put. Him. Oh no! But let's try to catch him. I'm not. Can he eat a piece of octopus? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, but cast in front of him. He'll, a, a ray will eat an octopus. Oh, look at all the fish following. Look at all the fish, guys. Oh all right, I'm gonna get my line down there. This is insane. What a crazy day. Guys, we're putting another uh, little silver minnow on. Just like that. Just let him down there. All right, my friends, the wind has kicked up a little bit. We're gonna make one more drift, and then we're gonna head in with our fish and cook these up. Got him. Oh, you do. Another big fish. Guys, another big fish. Now, this one might not be as big. It just was a big bite. Oh, nice. Guys, I launched that little dude, the, the bait fish away, and I thought maybe it's all fluttering. To the, I kind of let it sw swing in a pendulum back to the boat. I see something really blue. This might be another papil. Oh I think it is. Look at that, another papil. Oh, nice. Not a big one. Keeper. But a keeper, they have to be over 10 inches. This is about 10 or 12 inches. Gosh, guys, this is exactly what I was hoping for by using those minnows. We have such a big one. Sure, let them go then. Yeah, yeah that's, I, that's just, I mean, I wanted to keep it at first, but I was like, we have so many. Have, on, have it on film. Right? Uh-huh. Okay. Guys, we're actually gonna let this guy go after after some deliberation. Uh, we were gonna share with some people, but we already have so much fish, um, so many fish so much meat <laughs> we're going to let this guy go well guys we have some of these minnows we're the lucky ones they get to go free we're just gonna dump these guys out that was cool that was very very cool it's been a all right guys here we've got our beautiful ulua all right i think i'm just gonna fillet this guy i don't have a ton of experience gosh I don't have a ton of experience. It seems like there should be some head meat, though. Maybe I should just gut it. You know what, guys? I think there's too much meat on the head. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to gut it. It is amazing how small the gut cavity is on this fish. Like, this fish is almost all meat. And now, my friends, for the uku. The gray snapper. Look how I'm just I'm tearing the whole gill plate out. I should probably make a tutorial on this. I just tore the whole gill plate out and the guts almost in one pull. Just have to clean it out just a little bit more, but we have no gills, and look, all the fish is preserved, all the meat. All right, guys, check this out how, we, how I did this. Um, all I did was, I have to clean out just a little bit more, but all I did was pull the guts out, and that's it. So we have the whole fish, and I'll probably cut the tail off so it fits in the pan better, and then the same thing with the uku. Just pull the guts out, and so we have all the head meat. We're not wasting anything on this. That only works with fish that don't have a lot of little bones. And one of the reasons why we like about these fish so much is they don't have a lot of little bones in them, so you can cook them whole. With fish like crappie or perch, you, you kind of have to fillet them so you don't, you're don't you not digging through bones constantly. But these, we're good.
see what we got here. Oh man, guys, look at that. The fish is done. Fish. Perfect. All right, guys, so my dad is going to prepare the first taco. We have the fish done. Someone ate a big hole in it right there. I wonder, I wonder who that, that could one. be. Oh, yeah. someone. So this is going to be a really, a, a real fish, fish taco. It's going to be a lot of fish. Wow. Look good. A little more meat. Oh, man, Asa. God. That looks amazing. And um, let's see here, my second fork here. That's tartar slaw, guys, tartar made out of cabbage, slaw. pickles, and mayonnaise, and some seasoning. A mix between coleslaw and tartar sauce. Kind of just combine the two. All right. And then I'm, I'm going to leave the, the red salsa. off for now. I'm just going to try this that right is, here. That's good all by itself. All right, I'm going to get my bit of fish here. Actually, it's not a bit. I'm going to load this bad boy up. Is it started? Yeah, sir. I should pretty in. bit. Wow. All right. Whew. I'm hungry. I'm hungry too. Yes, indeed. Well, that kayak takes a lot out of you. Hmm. I'll tell you what. Are we geniuses or are we geniuses? <laughs> this fish is fish taco and fish sandwiches. My two favorite way to ha ways to have fish. So this fish is fantastic. I'm gonna I'm crack glad. me a cold one. Mmm. The drink of Hawaii. We should see if they would uh, sponsor us. Mm hmm. Sponsor the Hawaii series. The Aloha made soda. It doesn't get any more oh, no. Hawaiian no. than this. No, no. The only way would be as if I could be playing the ukulele in the background. Mm hmm. But I can't play the ukulele, so. Guys, made another one. Pops, cheers. Cheers. We came, we saw. We conquered. We ate. That, oh, we ate. We were out there for less than an hour and caught those fish. That was amazing. That, that was fun. That was so much fun. Don't forget, forget to check my spice in the description. It's great on everything. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you in the next Hawaii adventure. What is going on, guys? Welcome to another Hawaii episode. It is a beautiful and a busy day here at the beach. Um, I'm out here today with my dad. Uh, he and I are going to jump in the water here, just do a little snorkeling, looking around, uh, try to find some octopus, hopefully. And uh, we always use another octopus for bait. And just look around, have a good time. Should be good. Let's get in the water. I've always wanted to see if I could grab one of these. These uh, coronet fish let you get within inches of them. So I thought, I'm gonna try to grab one just suspended in the water. But they can back up and scoot on out of there when they want to. I thought I'd try it one more time on a different one. Nope, they'll let you get close, but you come within a foot of them and they take off. So here I had the three prong and we spot this school of big eyed scad. Uh, I think the Hawaiian word is akule, akule. Um, and it's been a long time since I've gotten, gotten some of the three prong. In fact, if you guys watch my channel, I'm, I'm terrible at the three prong. But right here, I swim down, bam, got one. First try, if I even see I turn around, I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> I even turn around and look at the camera. I was so surprised. And it was a headshot too, it was a perfect shot. I was so excited. I know this isn't a giant fish, so don't kill me, but I was super excited to get this. As I was sitting there holding my hand, I realized it was the same bait fish. This is actually a bait fish that we use for trolling, for catching like wahoo and stuff. So after that, I was feeling pretty confident. I thought I'd try again. Oh, just barely missed one right there. In fact, you'll see how close it is if we do a slow-mo. And let it go. And, oh, he took off. I should have let him. I just can't, just barely hit him. In fact, I may have even hit his fin just a little bit. Just knocked him for a loop there. 
just about an inch off. Next time, we got to lead him more. So I give the spear to my dad. He's gonna try. But by this time, that the school of the scab were pretty. They're pretty wise to us. They they started to. They wouldn't let us get as close as before. And he had a narrow miss there. And after a few attempts of that, the school kind of dispersed and stayed far away from us. So we resumed looking under ledges and stuff. As you can see here, a big nasty eel. You do not want to mistake one of those for an octopus. Um, there, those dudes will bite. But my dad and I are just looking around, looking for the usual octopus, and he goes under this ledge, and he actually told me a moment before this, hey, I think I might have a lobster under here, which is very unusual, because the lobster do not come out uh, in the daytime. And so to find one that was within reach, th this was this was crazy. You see the turtle hanging out right by him. He's like, excuse me, pulls out this huge lobster. Oh my goodness, Pops, hold on to him tightly because he could get away. Oh my goodness. In all our years of snorkeling here, we've never just gone out in the middle of the day and caught a lobster by hand. So I swim down and I grab the red bag and it, we were just so excited. I mean, we've been snorkeling for years and have never caught one of these. We've gone out at night once and caught a little one by hand. They come out apparently at night in droves. This one was so big we had a hard time getting in the bait bag and it was so spiky that it kept getting caught on the mesh and just kept pushing. It did not want to go in this bait bag. We uh, had to situate it. My dad had to fold the tail under it so it couldn't push its way out. We got it in. Oh man, this is this was amazing. That's the first time. That's the first lobster. That's the first lobster. Oh, man. I can't wait. Oh, Pops. We have lobster. Oh, lobster, oh, lobster and fish. Lobster and fish tonight. Oh, my goodness. Oh, <laughs> nice job. The shell is so um, spiky. Uh -huh. Spiny, shall we say? <laughs> Spiny lobster. Spiny shell. I can't believe I speared that fish too. I haven't. Oh, that was. Great. I haven't gotten something on a three prong in a long yes. time. Look, like, it looks like he's trying to eat it. It does. He's got it held right up. There we go. That's that is a huge lobster too, pops. Okay, let's guys. Get... This is the first time we've ever caught a lobster before. <laughs> that is a, 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 a big one. I mean, you guys, you guys. Have I guess we them. yeah, we caught a little time. Mike and yeah. I did, but but in the middle of the day, just swimming down. Oh my word! And catching. That. that is just cool so one. cool. That's the front. Wow. The back. Yep. Nice job, Pops. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. It took us a while, but we got a, uh, we finally got something big enough to cook this lobster. And we don't have a pan or anything uh, that's really big enough. But a friend, fortunately, gave us this big uh, plastic. Uh, here, what me, want me to hold them? Or I guess, I guess putting them in there. I just don't want him to make a break for it or something. You keep an eye on them. I'll keep an eye. Oh man, the lobster. But what we're doing, guys, is we have the pan there and we're gonna fill it with seawater. And we found that when cooking crustaceans, when we cook them directly in ocean water, the flavor is perfect. Because sometimes salting, when you try to salt fresh water, either you get the salt to, or the, you get the water too salty, or it's not salty enough. And it ends up ruining the flavor of the lobster. So that's why we get water straight from the ocean and the salinity of the water is perfect. Yes, yeah, so I'll grab him. You've got the water and we will throw him on the grill. All right, over here to our grills. What we're going to do is use utilize the grill to heat up this big pan of salt water. Gonna, I don't think I'm going to use that because that doesn't lay back. And Yeah, that's too small. Yeah. Just stick them straight on. Just put them in here. Oh, this is a bigger one here. This is my favorite. All right, lobster on the bobby. Ready? Just like turn on three of them or something to heat up yeah, that water. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right. I'll get a bowl, guys, and we'll fill the rest of that way up with water Woo. right there. And then we'll, where should we put the lobster? We'll just hang, we'll just hang on yep. Hang on to the shade. All right, and we'll just let that water boil. Still feisty. He's still, still kicking feisty. at me. Yep. About 10 minutes in, guys, and uh, should have some... I'm balling one. Right, sir. Here we go. Stick him. Ooh. Nice. Whoa. Good net. All right, there we go. All right, I'll get, get the foil and put it back on top of it. There we are. Put and it'll turn bright red. Yes, I was wondering what he's going to do. Like, the crawdads turn bright red almost immediately. 
Yeah, he's, he's bigger. It's going to take him a bit of time. Okay, uh, let's cut, we'll cut him that up. down. There we go. Just wait, cook him out 13 minutes, we figured. Yes, I'm going to start my timer. <laughs> All right, back to the grill. Mm. Oh, look at that big red lobster. Guys, we have this big platter because we don't have a plate that's big enough for him. Oh, nice. Oh, goodness. Look at that. Sit yeah. him down, I'll flip him over there. It is so cool. Now that's real pretty. <laughs> wow. How cool. How very, very cool. Oh man, does that not look oh, delectable? I'm and then so guys, excited. we have some melted butter to go with it. I think that should be good enough. Oh, wait, that, this is wait, that should go amazing. This is amazing. Cool. Right. Should we say a prayer? Thank you so much, Lord God, for the bounty of the ocean and your loving kindness in providing it. May you bless it to our bodies now in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Right. First, bounty. I want to try the legs. I've got to First see you if there's meat. Yeah, I want All right, let's go for the legs because we know the tail's good. Yeah, and they good. should be cool by lobster now. Too. Yeah, lobster tail will definitely be there. Look at these oh, there is meat in there. It's just a matter of if we can crack it. We've never caught a lobster big enough where no. we can eat the meat out of the legs. Like, no. you just throw the legs away. It's not worth it. Oh my gosh. He said, look at this. I feel like a magician. <laughs> oh my word. Is it good? Oh my goodness. Oh man, mine's coming out. Oh my word. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I'm not going to even dip the no. butter. I was about to you dip the first to. one, but I'm not. No. We should have brought. Do we have, do we have a fork? We don't have a fork. Mm -mm. To pull it out. Might not need it though. Wow. I'll have to eat that later. Wow, that is that good? Is good. From the ocean straight to the plate. I mean, guys, we didn't we didn't skip a beat. We got back, we put our snorkel stuff away, and we immediately started cooking on this guy. All right, watch this. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go. dip this in butter. I do love butter so much. We know you like butter. Mm. Okay, so the next question: Do the antenna? have meat in them. We've have, we've eaten a spine lobster once and it was really tiny. Yeah, it, was it was just barely, barely a legal <laughs> size, yeah. So this is... It, it, I, I can't, it, it's can't too spiny. It I mean, oh, it is yeah, spiky. it's like, ouch. Maybe we wait. Oh, you got it. Got oh, it. that's got meat in it. Ah, that kind of hurts your hand. Oh, that does have meat right in there. So, I guess if we take the end of the antenna, it's so Sniff. spiky it hurts your hands. Nothing in there? Not really. Huh, there's, there, I mean, a really, th like, like, Tiny, thin. wire piece of meat. We might have All to right. wait for Yeah, a, there's not a whole, yeah, yeah we, there's too, too spiky. Yeah. We got now a big tail. Yeah, though. we got a big tail. You know what, since you caught, I'm letting you do the arms are cracking that huge tail. I can do it. This is your lobster. it's a matter of just spinning it, I remember. Just kind of hold one end and the other and go opposite directions. There we go. Probably gonna get some good guts with it. Be my guess. There we go. Oh, whoa! Oh, look at all the whoa. meat inside there, too. Whoa, oh, guys. Goodness. Holy mackerel. I did not know. So, guys, at the restaurant, <laughs> they don't they don't leave this part They don't on. tell you about that. No, they use that, must use that for like lobster, lobster bisque. bisque or something. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Holy it's mackerel. You want to just like dip I, that thing in the butter? Get, and it looks like it? there's a little bit of, of line here I need to get. Oh, yeah, part of the, the poo in there. They, they chop that off in the restaurant. Yeah. They cheat us. This is just like, this is just like lobster chunky uh -huh. good meat. Sorry, I'm not waiting. You're not waiting for me? Oh my word. Wait, it's, it's chewy, definitely chewier mm, than yeah. crab. Oh yeah, yeah, lobster. It's meatier, chewier mm. kind of, yeah. Mm. Oh my gosh. It's so chewy. This is, I mean, we catch those Dungeons crabs. You guys watch all the crab videos? The Dungeons crab, like, melts in your mouth the, the lobster is definitely stringier mm. there's a lot of body to it stringier yep. and chewier yep. yep well guys fantastic day i really don't know what else to say we came we were not expecting to catch a lobster in the no. middle of the day fantastic no. first time that's ever happened to us amazing amazing catch pops <laughs> great job that was fun that was fun thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next adventure
wow what is going on guys welcome back to hawaii i don't think a morning can get more beautiful than this it is calm it is like 75 degrees perfect perfect temperature we have whales swimming close to shore i mean like maybe maybe 500 yards from shore which is close for whales we've got turtles and we've got a morning of fishing ahead of us i don't think it get any better than this check out my fishing spot here i have a whole long point of rocks and under the water there i know this because i spear fish here before never fish from shore but i've spear fish here there are a lot of arches and underwater caves and all kinds of good things right under there perfect spots for fish to hang out i have everything i need for the day right in this bag i've got uh, all my catch and cook stuff fishing stuff and of course camera stuff all right in here but i am keeping it kind of simple today all i have is one uh fishing rod here it's pretty light 15 pound test line we're just going to be going for refish today and the goal what i really would like to do is catch and cook a brand new fish a ton of different cool refish out here and it'd be fun to catch and cook something brand new so that is the goal i don't know maybe get like a like a pink tailed trigger fish or try eating a file fish or something weird like that and uh this is the spot to do it. I know because I've spearfished before here, tons of like different reefs or like different points that you go to. It can be mixed up a little bit. But I know right here I've seen more variety on this on this beach, on this point here than I have in most parts on most parts of the island. So we have a good chance of catching and cooking something brand new right here on the rocks. Since we're going for reef fish, it doesn't take a whole lot. Just have a small hook on here and we're going to put a couple pieces of octopus fresh caught my dad caught this recently first cast of the day which reminds me of my brand new ace videos first cast seasoning guys it has just come out check it out in the description i'll put a link to it and we are going to use that today to cook up our fish but if you guys want to check it out link it down below Ooh, just had one just first bite of the day First bite of the day on the first cast of the day. Got one, got one. Whoa, it is a hawkfish, I believe they're called. On that piece of octopi. Oh, whoa, crikey. Oh, there he is. All right, let's lower it right back down there. Maybe there's something else underneath this ledge here. It's pretty deep right in front of me. Oh, had a bite. Got one. Oh, a little goat fish, a little tight. I've caught many of these before, so still not, oh, not a new fish, but we'll take it. Gosh, whoa, there he goes. Use that guy for bait, catch a big ulua. As we uh, move around to this side, check out how kind of dramatic it gets. In fact, I know you see that point of rock, whoa, <laughs> that point of rock right there. I know that's an underwater arch because I've swam under it before. Guys, can you see the big turtle right down there, that green? He's right there. See him? That is cool. That is so cool. Oh, and I'm snagged. Dang it! I was distracted with the turtle. I let it sink too much. Got one, got one. All right. What do we got? What do we got? Whoa, whoa, guys. We got a brand new fish. We've got a brand new fish. What is this? If I have any locals watching this, you guys know instantly what this is. Wait, is this called a big eyed scad, I believe? Guys, we got a brand new fish to keep. Yes, yes, I've never tried one of these before. Guys, exactly what I wanted, a brand new fish to keep, not a giant. But I do know from snorkeling that these guys school up, and so they're probably more down there. We can try to catch another one, but we have a brand new fish to try. All right, guys, you know what let's do? Let's drop it right back down there. Let's see if we can get another one of those. Get a bite. Got one. Got one. Ooh, what is this? Oh, it's a little wrasse. A little tiny tyke. Use this guy for my aquarium. 
I don't have an aquarium. Guys, check that gorgeous fish out. Wow, that is so cool. Gosh, I wish I had an aquarium. I'd put him in it. Check it out. Another one of those little uh, whoa, hawk fish. Got to be very careful with these guys because they are so spiky. It's cool they, how camoed they are though. All right, let's let this little guy go. Um, I got to show you guys something cool here. Check it out. That's a tiny little crab. Whoa, good net. <laughs> that is a tiny little crab, little stone crab that that uh, hawk fish coughed up while I was taking the hook out. That is so cool. We'll throw that back there. Something will probably eat that. You know what? I should have put that on a hook, darn it. That was stupid. Got one. Is this another, another hawk fish? Is this a sign? Should we eat this guy? All right, guys. So I've decided something here. Um, this guy has it way down in his throat there, and it's at the worst possible spot in the fish's throat. And uh, this is the third one we caught. So even though this guy is little, we're actually going to try eating him. So we'll have a couple different fish here. And uh, yeah, look, his eyes are even doing something weird there. He has it, he has it way at the, at the worst part, right in the middle of his throat. And uh, I think we're going to keep this, harvest this guy. I don't know how well he'd do even if we clipped it and put him back. All right, so we got two fish. Both of them still kind of small, but let's try for one more. Let's get one more keeper fish to eat. It'd even be cool if we caught a different species. So we try three different seat species side by side. This little piece of bait is the last one. And if we can't catch a fish on this, we're gonna start cooking. I'd really like one more though. That's all we got, boys. That's all we got for the last bit. Come on. I promise, this is the last cap. Check it out. Look at that. Now here is a new fish that we've never eaten before. Guys, it has been years. The last time I caught one of these, I think, I think I was like, um, I'm not kidding, like 13 years old or something like that. This is the Hawaiian state fish. Check out those colors. Isn't that gorgeous? It's a trigger fish, exactly what I wanted. Man, that's a beautiful fish. It's almost, almost too beautiful to keep. Wow. Hmm. Do I eat this bad boy? All right, so uh, I'm gonna call my dad back. I suddenly had, I just hung up on him, so I don't want him to be worried about me, but I was just talking to him on the phone. He, he called me um, to ask me a question about something, and of course, that's when the fish bit. Hey, Pop, sorry about that. I just caught uh, a huma huma nuka nuka abua'a. Oh, nice. Yes. Oh, I know you're excited. Um, Yes, so I, I think I think I'm gonna eat this guy. Um, yeah, I just caught it. It's beautiful. <laughs> what do you think? Should I eat it? Oh, I think you should eat the huma huma. That that that'd be a good one. I think. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. It's it's yep. very beautiful, but uh, there are a lot of them down there. So. <laughs> That's right. All right, guys. I just bonked him on the head, knocked him out, and uh, we're gonna try trigger fish. Oh, look, there's a little turtle right there. Trigger fish for the first time. Um, one thing about this I was reading online is that uh, some locals were saying out of all the trigger fish, this was their least favorite one to eat in terms of taste, but uh, it's still very edible. We'll try it at least once. So I was reading in this online article that said the uh, early Hawaiians used to catch these guys by lowering a basket in the water around a reef and uh, putting sweet potatoes or pumpkin in the basket and the trigger fish would swim in and they would catch him that way and cook them up. It's interesting with this because I experienced this with the last trigger fish catch and cook. Um, even though it was a si that one was a sizable fish, 
there's just not a whole lot of meat on these bad boys. And that's interesting how red this one is. Each one they said tastes different. Um, and this guy is like, they're just, they're, they're mostly like head. So that's kind of interesting. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna save the rest of this. We're gonna use this in a crab trap in a later episode. I'm really excited to try this little guy. I think I'm gonna just, uh, we're gonna cook him whole. I'm gonna scale him. Whoa, he's got big scales and lots of scales and hard scales. All right, so the cleaning of the fish is done. Guys, we saved all the carcasses for two reasons. Uh, number one, don't want to attract sharks, especially since we have a beach right here and, and throw in um, fish carcasses. I don't know that actually little, if a couple little reef fish thrown in the water would make much of a difference, but just to play it safe, we're not gonna throw them in there. But also the other reason why we, uh, I saved the carcasses is for crabbing. Later on, we will uh, take these, put these in crab traps, drop them way out there, and that would be cool to eat, get to, in, uh, get to enjoy a tasty fish, and then use the carcasses to catch a tasty crab. And check this out. Got a little sandy spot right here. Looks like a perfect little corner. I don't have to sit on the hard rocks and uh, have a little corner, a beautiful view. We can cook up right here. All right. Set up our little stove here. Set the pot right on top with its little handle. Gonna turn this bad boy on. Let's add the old butter. A whole pool of it. First of all, we will add the little trigger fish right to the pool of butter. Then the hawk fish. In fact, right there. Make sure that trigger fish is thoroughly swimming. And then we'll add our scad. I still haven't looked up what that's called. I believe that's a scad. All right, three different fish. Two of them I've never had before, the humu nuka nuka awa'a and the scad. And now my friends, for the first time ever in a video, we've got Ace Videos seasoning right here. This is an unlabeled bottle. When you guys get it, it'll actually be a labeled bottle. This is the uh, one of the first ones ever made, so uh, the label's still not on it, but we finally perfected it. It is finally for sale. I'll put a link to it in the description below. I am excited to try it on this fish. I've already tried it before, so I know it's good, obviously, since it's my spice. It started out, I was strictly going for Cajun flavor, um, but as it kind of morphed and changed, it just kind of became its own thing. And so we decided it has a cajun -y flavor. It has a kick, because there's cayenne pepper in it, but it's just its own fish seasoning. Through all the alterations, it just became its own thing. So, gotta try it. First cast seasoning, put a link to it in the description. When we designed the seasoning, guys, I did not put as much salt as I wanted in it, because um, uh, I, I know a lot of people think that I oversalt things, so I thought it had more universal appeal if we cut back on the salt. And so, if you're a salty guy like me, you can just add your own salt to it. Otherwise, for all you people who maybe don't think like things as salty, this should be perfect all by itself. Add a little bit more to that corner right there. Ooh, looking good. Add some seasoning to this side here. Oh, man. So the trigger fish medallions are done. I'm gonna take those off. The rest of the fish has to cook a little bit more. I still see some like red right down in there. We'll let those cook in that butterly goodness, good Cajun flavor. Oh man, guys, on a, man, on a gorgeous Hawaiian day, it is a little bit warm out here. Getting into the, probably close to noon now, so starting to heat up, but on a beautiful, beautiful day like this, and the view, unreal, very cool. This is so much fun. Yo, let's say a prayer real quick before we dig in. All right, trigger fish, huma huma nuka nuka apua. Okay, first thing, I gotta say my spice is good. First thing I noticed about the fish though, 
soft, it's very chewy. I mean, not very chewy, that might be an overstatement. Man, it's good though. I don't know if it's because of my killer spice or the fish itself. You know how some fish is flaky? This is more steakier. This is good though. I, I can't tell though, I put so much seasoning on there. I don't know if it's the killer taste of my seasoning or it's the trigger fish itself. Online, people were like, eh, it's okay. But that is better than I thought it would be. Wow. All right, I think this fish should be done. Oh yeah. All right, we're gonna do a little taste test here. Which one out of these three is the best? First of all, I have another bite of trigger fish. I have to say, trigger fish, this is way better than I thought. Okay. Now we're gonna try the uh, hawk fish. That little character right there. He's more flaky, I have to say. Nice bit of hot fish there. Okay. Hmm. Interesting with that guy. I'll explain in a second. Now let's try this scad here. This guy is probably... To me, in my mind, whenever I see a silverfish, I automatically think it must be superior eating. But maybe not. That has more of a, like a game fish flavor like a, a little bit of a fishy flavor hmm all three fish are good I'm glad I kept all three and the trigger fish surprised me because based on the online reviews it was like ho-hum I don't think it's really good though gosh as weird as it sounds guys this trigger fish might have beat them that's just my opinion there might be a whole bunch of people like whatever but honestly I really like the trigger fish. I was not expecting that. Trigger fish is the favorite. Well guys, pretty much a perfect morning out here. Got to catch a ton of fish, new fish, and then got to eat some brand new fish out here on the rocks. What a gorgeous, gorgeous time. It's great lunch. Oh, so, so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to keep getting out there, trying new things, and leveling up in real life. And speaking of trying new things, don't forget my seasoning down in the description. I'll put it right at the top. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. What is going on, guys? Today, we are spear fishing. So here's the story, in case you guys haven't uh, watched one of the videos. I met a subscriber while I was snorkeling in the water. And he was a spear fisherman, and, and like, you know, a serious spear fisherman, not like the little Hawaiian sling spear like I use. And uh, we started talking. Anyway, he invited me to go spear fishing with some he and his buddies. And uh, so, that's what we're doing this morning. Hey! Hey! <laughs> How are y'all doing? Yeah. What was your name again? Mike. Mace? Yes. Mike. Yes. Yeah, and Mike. you're Mike too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a... And I'm Ryan. Ryan. All right. Nice to meet, to meet you. All right, guys. So this is Mike. He's the one I met in the water the other day. He's all camoed up. This is pretty sweet right here. I mean, even camo flippers. This is serious spear fishing. Let's go. This was so cool because this is my first uh, official spearfishing uh, adventure. I've watched lots of spearfishing videos. In fact, when YouTube recommends one uh, to me, I usually click on it. And so to actually be on one now with real spear guns and all the right equipment and stuff was really cool. And uh, Mike, Mike was kind enough to show me every uh, thing that I needed to know. So the first little bit, I just decided I would follow him around with the camera and he would show me everything that he was going to do. I was amazed at how long he could hold his breath and how deep he dove down. But uh, you know, that's just comes from, uh, comes with experience. So the first thing I learned about the spearfishing thing is we went around uh, uh, areas like this where lots of arches, lots of big rocks, lots of structure, because you needed to corner the fish. When fish see you coming with a spear gun, most of them stay way 
out of your way. And so it's just, it's impossible to get close to him. So we had to, uh, to snorkel around a lot of big arches and stuff like that. Uh, so you can kind of corral fish, kind of corner fish, and things like that. And then also he would get down really close to the bottom, as you can see right here, and just kind of try to blend in, just to be, just to stay as innocuous as possible, and just get closer to the fish. I always get excited a little bit when I see uh, these lobster shells laying on on the coral where they've uh, molted, because uh, this one was whole, and I thought maybe it was a, you know just for a second there was a lobster that I could catch but during the daytime especially when the waters is clear most of them stay well in the coral so that was just a shell so this was pretty cool here um, a bunch of guys were out there with us there was uh, Nick there was Ricky who actually has a YouTube channel too I'll link it up in the description uh, and some other guys out there and we we're all kind of spread out but what they did is in the middle of the cove they put this buoy out there and has clips and stuff off of it as you can see and uh, they use this as kind of a reference point you can hang your a gun off of it or any equipment or your fish and uh, that was just kind of like that reference point and then everybody spread out and just kind of hunted where they wanted and, and then you can see it's anchored there to the bottom with an anchor obviously here we have a trumpet fish I always think these are so cool I remember uh, somebody told me a long time ago I don't know if it's true but they're one of the few fish that can actually swim backwards most fish can't swim backwards apparently anyway uh you can see here just tons of cool arches all kinds of cool stuff uh it was you know it's kind of the difference between like hunting in an open v field versus hunting in a forest you know underwater this is like hunting in a forest so there are lots of cool areas to snorkel around try to corner fish and then here like you can see mike he's <laughs> looking back in the cave there that's that was really cool that was pretty intense you have to be careful they said shooting in a cave because if your spear gets lodged uh way back in there apparently had a whole bunch of fish back in there uh, but if your spear gets lodged in the rocks you've lost it so uh you have to be careful about shooting back in there so this is something that was really cool. Uh, I look down and I see uh, a crab claw, and then in fact there was a whole oh, a, a crab that had just been torn apart, and there were legs everywhere, there were bits of shell everywhere, and what that is is that is an octopus. Octopus find crabs and, and any kind of shellfish, and they uh, just tear them apart, then they push them out of their hole. So I knew an octopus was in the area, and here's actually Mike swimming down with his GoPro view. He actually saw an octopus, and uh, and pried it away from the rocks here so there are octopus everywhere but you know you can kind of find their holes if you look and you see a bunch of shells and, and crab pieces everywhere because they eat tons of crabs and stuff and then here you see the, you know, the octopus and it gives off this just ink and like crazy it gives us this, this little mushroom cloud of ink that was so cool and uh, this one was too small to keep they have to be over a pound in hawaii in order to be able to keep that's a cool little guy. And this was, this was something that was really cool. I've never seen this before. So he's up, he was in deep water. And octopus are really low on the food chain, actually. Most fish, will, even reef fish, will come around and they'll try to attack an octopus. And it seemed like the octopus realized he was, you know, he wasn't undercover. He wasn't anywhere near rocks. So he suddenly switched. And it looks like he was trying, he just was like motionless. He didn't go down to the bottom like they normally do. And I'm wondering if he was trying to make himself look like a piece of seaweed or something like that but he was definitely he was doing some little trick there playing dead or something uh because all almost all fish on the reef will eat an octopus then this was cool i'm swimming along and i turn around and right behind me is this big school of mullet and it was actually the biggest school i had ever seen and then mike told me it was the biggest school of mullet he had ever seen they swam by him as well but it was they weren't in season there's a three uh three month off season for them and we were in the middle of it so we did not shoot them it was really crazy i was going over rocks here and stuff he was just just fearless just going through just it was really cool because it's just like hunting except you're underwater and here's one of the other guys, Ricky. Uh, this, he has a YouTube channel as well. Like I said, I'll link it up. He had this little scuba tank that he just attached to himself, a little harness. And so he could breathe. had a little mouthpiece on it, and he could just breathe and go along the bottom even longer than we could. And so that was a cool little trick. He had a bunch of fish, which I'll show you in a second. And then I found this cool shell here. Normally when you find shells on the bottom, they're occupied by slugs or crabs or whatever. But this one was not. So I actually kept that one. And uh, usually when we find a shell like that, we'll keep it. We'll give it to some kids on the beach. Because these shells usually don't wash up on Hawaii uh, beaches. You just don't find a lot of shells on Hawaii beaches. 
And so this is one of the coolest tricks right here. We're going along and Mike pulls out a spoon and he just tosses it and lets it flutter to the bottom. And I had no idea why he did that. So I asked him about it. And what it is, he keeps a spoon on him. And a prize game fisherman, why is the Ulua? And Ulua, though, stay far away from spear fishermen. But a little trick to get them to turn around and come closer to you is you can take a spoon out of your pocket you know you bring a spoon out there and then you toss it and as it flutters to the bottom it acts as kind of a lure and the lure are really attracted to it and they'll actually come over and to inspect whatever you know they're curious about the spoon they'll inspect the spoon and mike actually captured some really really cool footage of it right here he threw out the spoon and this huge trevally well huge to me anyway comes over and look at it it's like um, it's it's coming over it's inspecting the spoon it's not even paying attention to mike anymore and right here, he shoots at it, but he actually misses. I'll show it in slow motion in a second. The GoPro got all messed up when he shot. So right here, it's going around. But I, I thought this was insane. Like the oh, Trevally's suddenly not even paying attention to him. And I'll slow it way down so he shoots, and he's just a little bit ahead of it. Just leads it just a little bit too much. Right there. And then I'll, I'll pause it so you can see. It is just, it's like less than an inch away right here i'll pause it look at that look <laughs> look it's it's literally it's probably even touching the trevally but just missed him so that was unfortunate but i thought that was a cool trick and then we're going along and mike points down i see something some trash or what i think is trash on the bottom and it's a five dollar bill it's actually pretty common to, to uh to find money out when you're snorkeling because the tourists come along and they'll have uh, money in their pockets and they forget that it's in their swimsuit and they'll wade out into the water and it just drifts away from them and then it usually ends up somewhere around the rocks on either end of the beach so it's actually not the first time i found money but it's nice nice little bonus to the day <laughs> so then of course I'm looking everywhere for more this is just a piece of trash or something bag on the bottom so but did not find any more money and so then it was time to, for me to spearfish and so one of the guys left a gun on our little buoy and I went out and it was official I was excited I was also kind of nervous I, for some reason in my mind I had it built up this is gonna be a lot harder than it was but uh you know i loaded this bad boy up here it was a little bit of struggle to load it up mike was nice and he got me the the right gloves he even got me the uh the, there's a suit that you wear with a thick pad on the chest so that you can load you can hold the gun against your chest and load it because it's very hard to load as you can see at this point i was feeling really good excited but then i thought you know what? better not get too cocky I'm just going to go with the shallows and try this out on a smaller reef fish. So I decided to target what I call saltwater bluegill because that's what they seem like. They seem like saltwater bluegill to me in their mannerisms and how hard they fight and then just how they look. So I targeted one of these guys. Boom. First shot, first kill ever with a spear gun, and it was a headshot. Beginner's luck, no doubt. And all that blood in the water there did worry me just slightly. Thoughts of sharks were going through my mind at this moment, but I was super happy. Um, yeah, I was pretty much basically feeling like a boss at this point. So I shot this spear gun for the first time, got the feel of it, and got my first fish. So here, Ricky comes over, he starts talking to me. He has a stringer of fish, as you can see there. They were chubs, and I saw tons of these these little, like, uh, saltwater chubs in the water. And he advised me to try uh, for those, because they're in the area, and they were uh, very good tasting. Some areas, apparently, they are not very good tasting. And he said, uh, that may be one I should target. And I thought, that sounds good to me. So I'm swimming around looking for schools on these little chubs and here I see I found a flounder that was pretty cool but I know not to eat a flounder unless it's really huge and maybe I can fillet it or something but I don't know those peacock flounder just that one that we ate if you guys watched that video just was not very good uh, this was the only miss I shot at an a holy holy I think it's called why a holy holy 
I just like saying that. I shot. That was the only miss of the day. It turned out. I thought I'd have. A, I thought that I would have a lot more misses. And uh, but I swim long, spot a chub, and just zero in on him. I cannot express how satisfying it was to Ooh. shoot a fish, to go out and try something brand new, and to be shooting fish and Whoa. getting lunch and trying just a brand new thing. It was just so cool. Thank you to Mike for for doing this. And so I got my first chub there, kill him real quick. And again, not a huge one, but it was a good pan pan size, good eating one. I did eat these later. I know they were small, but it's that feeling when you're first trying something and you're having some success with it. So that was great. And then I see another one, zero in on it. And, and just for some reason, a lot of the chubs stayed far away, but for some reason, a couple of them would just come and they would just, it was almost like they were curious about you and they would get really close. Boom. Got that one too. The water was really uh, foggy at this point. There we go, it cleared up. And so got fish number three. Thank you to Ricky for your help as well. This was this is so much fun. So there was my contribution to the day. I was super happy with this. And I had the other fish in my pocket, believe it or not. It actually fit in my swimsuit pocket. So uh, I had that in there and then swam over to Ricky and he put him on his stringer. It was just it was so cool. And uh, and then that wasn't even the most exciting part because while we were doing all this, Mike was still out spearfishing and this happened. Well guys, that was a blast, but check out what Mike got. <laughs> guys, look at that. All right, before we show you the fish, I did have one of my GoPros mounted up on Mike's gun, so, I got, he got some cool footage. Unfortunately, the GoPro mount was not the best because every time you'd shoot the gun, it would actually come loose and if it, it fell off at least once. But here he is stalking this big, what turned out to be a milk fish. So here you can see the milk fish has its nose down and I just know from, from spearing goat fish that the only way to spear goat fish is when they have their like noses down because they're looking for food in the sand and only then can you actually sneak up on them uh, with like a Hawaiian sling spear. Um, so I think, Mike, he right here, he shoots at it. Unfortunately, the GoPro didn't get any more of the shot, but Mike did miss this one. Um, but he keeps swimming around. He was persistent. He's stalking this one here. Kind of shoots off. It's so much harder to get the big fish. But then right here, he swims down. And like I said, unfortunately, the GoPro came loose. Actually fell off the gun, but he got his fish. Boom. Sorry about the camera angle <laughs> there. He did shoot so it. So what was the story behind it? So, okay, so it, it was swimming on the bottom. Okay. I shot at it, and I think I hit it right here. Uh-huh. And the spear didn't go through, though. And so he started swimming off, but something, like, it stunned him somehow. And then he started doing this thing where he just kind of flopped. But then he get his wits back and start swimming <laughs> off. So like 30 feet later, I'm like, I'm gonna lose him because he's just getting away from me. Uh -huh. And so I swim down to the bottom, don't have time to reload the spear, just grab the spear itself, swam, it was about 30 feet deep, swam it up to him and just impaled it right here into him a second time. That's crazy. And that time it was in him for sure. That is awesome. I knew I had him on that one. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> well guys, thank you so much for hanging out today. We had a great day of spearfishing out here. That is so impressive. Thank you, Mike, for uh, inviting me out here. And we'll have to do this again. Nick, thanks for hanging out. No problem, man. And we will see you guys in the next one. guys welcome to another Hawaii episode it is a, a gorgeous day here in Hawaii 
Um, nothing on the first drop of the old crab trap, but we'll drop back down. Now, usually we don't get anything on the first drop. The first drop is always unlucky. I can never think of a time, actually, that I actually caught something on the first drop. Anyway, the goal for today is to try to catch a keeper crab. Let's get this trap back down there. Have a couple traps, and uh, yeah, let's try to get a good crab. So straight dead ahead, we have our second trap. It's been there about down there about 20 minutes. It also has a GoPro. Let's see if we got anything. Nothing. You know what we have here, guys? We have an old piece of chicken. Look at that. I threw an old piece of chicken in with this fish stuff because uh, I thought it might be good for bait, old chicken. So I'm gonna add that to it. Actually, before I add that to it, I'm gonna try to take this spike here. I don't have a knife, but the flesh of this fish is really soft. So I'm gonna just try poking it a few times to try to get more of those like juices released. There we go. So we have a piece of chicken and a fish. Looks kind of weird, but let's get this down there. So with fresh bait, I lowered it to the bottom with high hopes, two stinky pieces of bait on there, old chicken and a piece of fish. And it actually landed right in the middle of a weed patch. Now first, I want you guys to note the whale noises. That is not fake. I did not dub that in. I think when the camera's close to the bottom, it picks up the whale noises. It's like extra loud because it, it like boomer it, it boomerangs off the bottom, so to speak. And so you get some really cool whale noises that way. And we have our first um, curious fish of the day. This is a little puffer fish. And when I was younger, whenever we'd get around, uh, this is all pre-YouTube days when I was like a teenager and we first started fishing um, out away from shore. We'd always catch these little puffer fish whenever we get around the weed patches there. You see two of them coming up. And I guess they just live uh, in the little underwater forest there. And they're really funny looking. It looks like they have little beards. And I've never seen them get bigger than that. And apparently they're an aquarium. You can, they're aquarium fish. In fact, I think all puffer fish are kind of potential aquarium fish. But they don't get very big. And they're hilarious when you, when you catch them and you pull them up. They actually get the size about the size of a baseball when they inflate. And it's, it, they're really, really funny looking then. So we had a few of those uh, swimming around. And then we have a different kind of puffer fish. This is called a white spotted toby. Um, T-O-B-Y. Toby like a, like a person. And uh, it's in the puffer fish family as well. And uh, he was checking out the line. They're very curious. Uh, in fact, there were a lot of them swimming around the trap uh, the whole time, the whole 20 minutes it was down there, checking it out. And so we had a good variety of little puffer fish hanging out. But um, all of them uh, stayed pretty close to the reeds there. They never, never really left it. This guy was about the most ambitious one. All of them stayed down in the reeds. And uh, you'll see why in a minute here. Um, I think they kind of, they're a little skittish. And for good reason, a lot of predators around. There is an uku. Uku, or gray snapper, as they're called on the mainland, are one of the main predators we actually catch in this area. In fact, out of all the game fish we catch, we catch more uku than anything. And he kind of circled around, coming in for a closer look. They can smell the bait and stuff, but... The trap seemed to scare it off, so uh, the, it didn't ever came in and actually took a chunk out of the bait, which kind of surprised me a little bit. So I moved it about 50 yards over, lowered it back down again, and here it is back at a clear, sandy area. And uh, the first customer of the day, finally, a little white crab. In fact, a really tiny white crab. He starts eating on the tail. He ate on the tail for about five minutes or so, which actually, like, surprised me. He was, I guess, eating. I don't know. It was just very strange to me. He actually ate off a good portion of the tail uh, when I pulled it up. And he's working his way around the bay. He mostly stayed behind us. So we didn't really get a good view. But pay attention to the corner of the screen here, the right-hand corner. See, there's something moving. It's a big, fat puffer fish. I mean, enormous. And he wasn't even inflated. They only inflate when they're, like, threatened. And he's just cruising along like nothing's going on. Let's see a replay. Look how fat that puffer fish is. 
I wish he would have swam over to the trap. That would have been hysterical. I've never seen a puffer fish that wide. And then you hear that noise. That is a crab climbing on the GoPro. So don't ask me why he thought to jump on the GoPro. Um, you know, normally the GoPro actually kind of scares them away. That's why so many crabs are kind of skittish about it. But he was uh, messing with the GoPro, I guess. And he jumps in, but still not a big one. It's another white crab. And he mostly stayed behind the bait. And I pull him up. And he's in there, and you can see it's a little male crab. And uh, so he they have to be four inches across, though, to keep. And they have to be male. You can't keep any of the females. And he hangs in there. Will I catch him? Barely hanging on. Boop. Nope. I actually didn't even know that he was in there. I, I had no idea there was a crab. So he hit the edge of the paddle and dropped down. Lucky him. So I moved the crab trap over right by this anchored boat. And I thought this would be cool to get some cool views around this anchored boat. Maybe there would be some big crabs hanging out around there. And uh, I lower it down. And there's the boat anchors that go all the way to the bottom. So usually creatures hanging out around the anchors. And you can see that school of fish. I thought this is so cool. The school of fish see the trap. And they can smell again. They can smell all the smells of that, of that fish and the chicken. But mostly it's the fish that attracts them. So when it settles on the bottom, they become extremely curious to for, and come in for a closer look. It's a school of, uh, well, on the mainland we call them Trevally, Jack Trevally, but uh, in Hawaii they call them Papio. And these are baby ones, they can actually get giant, you know, they can get like 100 pounds or whatever, but a school of small ones. And I really was hoping that they would come in for a bite, like that'd be cool if they just tore up the piece of bait there but they're a little bit scared of the trap and I'm wondering if I left the bait out for a little bit too long so like rotted fish is really really good for crabs uh, or kind of fish that's starting to turn is really good for crabs but these uh these fish only like fresh stuff so they were really curious and they swam around it but none of them actually swooped in and took a chunk out of the fish which would have been cool so I think next time I'm gonna try to get more uh, like fresher fish and that would be really cool to like start a feeding frenzy uh, in a, you know, a fish in a crab trap. So I moved it one more time to a different spot. And in fact, I only moved about 20 yards over from, from that spot near some uh, rocks that were down there. Thought maybe it would change my luck. Uh, in fact, you can still see some of the, uh, the papillo. Those are actually, those fish that just passed are actually called leatherbacks, I believe. But there's a papillo. Uh, so still some of them hanging around. But then you also had the uh, traditional reef fish that usually don't leave the reef. They don't swim around the sand. They stay close to their rocks and stuff, and uh, you can see them in the background there chomping on all the rocks and everything, but none of those dudes swam over to it uh, to inspect. Again, fish, especially uh, the Hawaiian reef fish, like fresh. They like fresh fish, and so I think I'm going to switch it up next time, though, and put some fresh stuff in there instead of, uh, you know, this fish had been left out a little bit, and it was frozen for a long time. And I think if I do that, we'll actually have a good mix of crabs and fish coming into the trap and uh, we get some cool views that way you can see them all you know reef fish are the worst offenders when it comes to tearing up the reef in fact look at this goat fish in the back they have, they have these whiskers they're real stiff that they used as like a prods and they chomp down on the coral they dig through the sand and this dude's they're like a little little plow underwater they just stir up everything and they just they're trying to unearth um, little crabs and stuff like that and this dude was going around. I ho I was hoping he'd come over to the trap and get in. See, I was using his whiskers, like plow up the bottom. Well, my friends, I still have zero crabs, and I've dropped the traps probably together the two um, probably about ten or twelve times, and nothing. So we're gonna switch it up. We're gonna go to Plan B. A lot of cool views down there, but we're gonna go to Plan B. I'm gonna shore fish. I actually had an invitation from a local here in Hawaii that I uh, that I know or that I met at the mall actually. He said, I like your channel. And we started talking about fishing, of course. And then once you start talking about fishing, you can't stop talking about fishing. Anyway, he said, come join me and my friends. They're set up there like camping or something on a, on a beach down here. So I thought, if I can't catch any crabs, I'm gonna go down there. I'm just gonna join them and see what they're doing. They said they're Ulua fishing or Trevale fishing. So that would be cool to catch or witness. I don't know anything about like that, the big Trevale fishing from shore. It's called dunking here in Hawaii. And uh, so it'd be cool to learn about that. And so I'm gonna head over there, hang out with them. Let's see what let's see what happens. Cause this crabbing thing, we're we're done with this for now. <laughs> Watch, you know, as soon as I throw this down there, crabs are gonna be all over it. All 
right, my friends, we are on our way down to a spot. I'm really excited to see this box. I've never been here before. So new fishing spot, new guys to meet, new locals, new friends, new ways of fishing. All right, oops, there's a car coming. All right, I came to this spot. I, I so I just driving and I thought, anyway, there's a, the reason why I stopped at this spot, so I'm not actually sure if this is where we're supposed to stop. I see all those fishing rods. Like, look at that insane amount of fishing rods. And the guy said that one of the places is called Hole in the Wall. And I was like, is this Hole in the Wall? Well, in fact, there's a hole in the wall. Is that them? That might be them. They said they were going to camp overnight. Look at this spot. Off the sea. We have... Oh, this is cool. Oh, this is really cool. Fisherman, we've got a model photo shoot going on down here. I've only met this subscriber once, so I can't remember. Who are you? Oh, wait, there he is. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for inviting me, man. Yeah. Good to see you. Wow, this is quite the spread. <laughs> like, are those you guys fishing rods too? Yeah. Sweet, sweet. Wow, are you, are you going to make a fire too? Oh, dude, this is sick. <laughs> Hello, what's your name? Nathan. Nathan, nice to meet you, Nathan. Nice to meet you too. Colby. Colby, I might not remember if his name's Colby, I'm Nathan. Nate, Nate. Yeah. so Nate, Nathan, Colby. What's your name? Jay? Cool. Wow. I didn't know the spot was down here. <laughs> hey, what's your name? Zorin. Zorin? Yeah. Nice to meet you, Zorin. Cool. I didn't even know this spot was down here. Is this a mostly like a local hangout kind of a thing? Yeah, I kind of yeah. know about it. Yeah. I didn't, I've driven by this a bunch of times, didn't know it was here. Yeah. Dude, I like this. Big fire, nice spread here. I'm not gonna stay the night, but I thought I'd just come and hang out with you yeah. guys for a while. Hopefully, I mean, Lewis strikes while I'm down here. That'd be really cool to like witness that whole thing. So. Oh man, guys, this is so cool. And we got the tide coming in. Look at that big wave. Wow. I'm gonna stay out here for the beautiful sunset and uh, probably, probably until it gets too dark for the cameras to see. But in the meantime, I mean, look at this view. Can't beat this. Unbelievable. I would really love to see a big Ulua strike one of these, though. What do you have for bait on a lot of these? Uh, taco. Taco? Okay. Yeah. Do you put like a whole tentacle on or a whole taco? Yeah, or? Like a whole tentacle. Okay. Yeah. Is that the bait bucket? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So you have some crabs in there. And then, the, what, is it, what are the fish called? Uh, kupiti and ahole hole. Ahole hole. Ahole hole. You know, guys, this is that one we ate in that first episode. We tried eating one of those. And then this is like a saltwater bluegill here. Anyway, you guys can see them down in there. Cool. Nice. But the main bait is taco. Do you guys usually pour the concrete like rod holders yourselves? Or do other people... Do you actually have you like poured these before, or somebody no, else come not along? Me, but I've known people who have. Okay, that's really cool. So guys, they pour a concrete rod, rod holders right in the rocks. You just leave them here, and any fisherman that comes along can use them. And they just have a ton of them all along the rocks there. Cool. The sun is just going down behind the horizon there. Oh man, I'm excited. So guys, this is Michael. This is the guy I was telling you about that I met in the mall check out his uh, channel in the description i'll put a link to it and he's going to cast one of these baits out there a slider rig so guys all it is is you have this big sinker here it anchors to the bottom and then we clip and they cast out there and it's supposed to hook on the rocks on purpose that's why it has the wire so you try to get try to get snagged and then uh, you just slide baits you would clip baits on and attach to the line and slide them down all the stuff that you saw in that bucket there and as well as the octopus and that's basically what slide bait fishing is Yeah, 
guys, it's kind of damp, so it's having a little bit of a hard time yeah. catching. But... Oh, right there, right there. There we go. Now we're cooking. Oh. Nice. There we go. <laughs> that's hot. Dude, that's hot. That is max hot. <laughs> Oh, that's so warm. Alright guys, so Colby is the chef for the evening. He has a little uh, papillo here and uh, put some ace spice on it. Dude, I would I would really go crazy with go it, you know crazy, what I'm saying? Right. Like coat it really yeah there we go now we're, now we're that's the speed we're talking about. He's put some ace spice on it and uh, we're gonna fry it up. Guys, look at this spread they have here. So they've got they got the fish that they caught. And then they have a frying pan on a fryer. You got a boom box right here. You got a generator on the other side. You hear the generator. Wait, was that? What was it? I heard a bell. So, is somebody up there? Guys, we heard a bell. A oh, miner right there by my backpack. Guys, we heard a bell, so we're gonna inspect. Hmm. Nothing's ringing right now, guys. All right, so back to the table. Uh, we'll uh, we'll keep listening for bites, guys. But we got a couple of papillo up here. Cook them in a little oil. Start it up. Got a little flame going under there. Eat up the oil. Sweet. <laughs> Fish on the bobby. Somebody just say. My eyes are. J Book? I love that sound. Yeah. yeah I'm not bad at All right. Double Taste of the islands. You know, I didn't catch. <laughs> oh, nice. Brown hoggy. Guys, earlier today they caught some uh, trigger fish. This is that the pink tail trigger fish. If I may do the honors, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put some seeds on this pink tail triggerfish guys. I like to go pretty crazy. Like nice and cover it. That's the hoggy. Uh dude, that's a fat fish right there. There we go. Oh J boy, I don't know if you like move your speaker. Alright, we got finished fish here guys. Uh oh Don't trust me. There we go. Oh, that looks good, man. Fresh fish. And what I like to do, you guys, I made my seasoning not quite as salty as it should be, in my opinion, because some people complain about they're like on these no-salt diets and all that stuff. So I always add a little bit of salt to my seasoning. All right, let me know what you think, man. Oh. the seasoning good. This has to be in a restaurant. What are we? <laughs> Tell me, this is the, the your seasoning. Yes, it is my seasoning. Right. seasoning. It has like a Cajun spiciness to it. Oh, bro! Good. Oh, ask me. I gotta get your seasoning. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'll leave some with Michael. I'll leave some for you guys. Right. What? Oh, yeah. That was pretty major. <laughs> Oh, Michael's gonna try some. With my marshmallow. With your, mar <laughs> your marshmallow. Oh wait, wait, and that's not the. Wait, wait, just a second. Before you take that bite, see, I didn't oh, prepare you didn't that, side. that side. Where so just a second. Smart. So on my season, I think it needs just a little bit of salt. I made it. All these people are on all these no salt, no salt diets. So I didn't put as much as I wanted to in this, to make it more universal. There. Did that go better? Yeah. There that we go. All right. Okay. Oh, that seasoning is good. <laughs> it's good. Excellent. Right. Excellent. Dude, I'll leave you. I'll leave you a bottle before I leave. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. It's kind of what? It's kind of really truly. Really? Kinda... Guys, it... Kobe like said, "Pink tail trigger fish." 
is really chewy. That, that is a fat fish right there. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's, that's a fat one too. This is another thing we can pull that one off. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, those trigger fish pull up, put up a fight too. Oh, yeah. You know, if you could add it, I'll just hold the light. Ooh. I guess we have to trigger a fish. So how much do I put it? Dude, just just a light sprinkling. It doesn't have to be a lot. Because there's already a little bit of salt in the Yeah, just a little bit more. There we go. Alright, pink tail trigger fish. Dude, if you want to dig in first. No, all you. I've tried this before. You tried pink tail? Oh, okay, yeah. okay. I'll give the camera to you. Hoggy is what you guys call him? Yeah. Oh. oh yeah, it's like... Quick chicken. It's tough. It's tough, yeah. yeah. That's like, so interesting. Yeah, it's, you gotta chew a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be really chewy, I can already tell. <laughs> the flavor's good. Yeah. It's like steak or something. It's like really thick. Tender. Mm -hmm. It's like That's an so overcooked good. chicken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Robert. That's, yeah. That's probably one of the Robert. chewiest fish I've ever eaten, right? Guys, this is delicious, but chewy. It's a cool combination. You're getting all fish flavor, but yeah. chewy. <laughs> nice. Guys, I'm not sure if we're on or not. Guys, reeling in his line. We might have something. Dude, are you on? Oh, dude! Oh, it's a big puffer! Oh, oh shoot! Oh, dude, it's a spiky puffer fish! Whew. Oh, what's Well, guys, we got a spiky puffer fish here. I just threw in bait too. You just threw it on? Oh wow. Yeah. Well, there's first catch of the evening. <laughs> Guys, he's so nah. spiky we can't really grab him. He's taking his shoot. Maybe this wave will move. Oh, there you go. Wow. Are those poisonous? I'm not sure. I don't think so. I think it's the white ones that are poisonous. Yeah. There we go. Well, <laughs> well, there's something, I guess. <laughs> well, guys, did not catch anything besides the puffer fish uh, this evening. But uh, uh, Michael has uh, the guy who invited me has a GoPro, and uh, they're gonna spend the night there. And I'm gonna get back home. No fish, but um, they have a GoPro there, and we'll see what happens if anything happens in the middle of the night. I'm gonna go home get some shut eye. Let, let them camp out on the beach. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> 
right. Wow. What a great find. Like two minutes in the water. What is going on guys? Back out here in Hawaii with it in the water like two minutes. My dad already caught a really nice octopus. This is the second time we've been out here this year because the first time we came out here, we only got to make just a handful of videos for the whole time we were here because the conditions were so rough. There were storms. Look at that guy. It's a good one. That is a good one. It's a two pounder. Yeah, we had storms, the conditions were rough. We had one time where the storm was so bad, it pulled a boat from its anchor and washed the boat up on shore here. So um, it was really tough. So we're back out here again though to film another Hawaii series. And this octopus, what do you think we're gonna, should we cook it up? Use it for bait? Half and, um, half, right? half and half? Let's do half and half. So we got our little octopus and a tide pool right here. We're about to clean him. He's just hanging out. guys so we are going to dispatch this guy real quick quickest way to kill these they have a nerve right between the eye that we just go and he's dead that simple that easy and even though it's still moving this actually this octopus will move for like 30 or 45 minutes after it uh, even after it's dead maybe not 45 minutes like 30 minutes max but it'll still be moving and changing color and all you have to do to gut an octopus super simple I just go and kind of cut along some of the membranes right there and then you just grab, there we go, and then we just pulled, oh, got a couple more things here. It's really important to get the ink, ink sac out of there because we found that if the ink sac leaks into the octopus skin, fish will not bite it. Like even though he's like has no head and stuff, he's still moving around, still changing color. And we're just gonna, I, I just, uh, when I'm preparing my octopus, just cut all the tentacles off cut it up lock so it's really easy to prepare and there is the beak right there guys can you open it mm -hmm. like it's kind of hard yeah, it's, it's, it's a it's, it's a good little beak though it can uh, crush crabs they eat tons of crabs um, I don't know what else they eat besides crabs in those shells there, there he goes it opened all right that's cool don't want to get bit by that either we've gotten bit a few times yeah he'll take a, actually just pull a plug yeah, it'll like yeah a nice little round plug out of your skin i mean not not that big it's like small but they'll they'll take a plug out of you it hurts. <laughs> and there we go guys a cleaned octopus we got this parts here which are great for bait or we could use that in a crab trap if we wanted and then we got all the tentacles great fish bait great for eating i think we're gonna eat some uh octopus this evening all right guys, our octopus is frozen, so we're gonna get out of the freezer in just a second. But first, we will scoop some salt water right out of the ocean into our pot here. The reason why I'm getting salt water for boiling up the octopus is because the last couple of times I've tried cooking this octopus, 
I either make the salt too salty and then the octopus just tastes super salty or I don't put enough salt in the water and a lot of the, almost all the flavor of the octopus leaches out into the water and it just tastes like nothing. So I thought, you know, whatever. The, uh, if you guys watch one of the videos uh, when I boiled up crabs, I boiled up crabs straight in the salt water. Mwah, tasted amazing. So I thought I'm gonna try the same thing with octopus. Just boil it up in water from the ocean so the salinity is perfect. Let's add this to the hot stove top. Just for fun, let's add some lemon to the salty water. Then we'll grab our frozen octopus. Pull out three frozen tentacles. Then I'm gonna cut this octopus into chunks right now because octopus is way easier to cut up while it is frozen than when it's all soft and malleable. Now we will add it to the boiling water. Now we're gonna let this octopus boil for 30 minutes. If you guys watched the last Octopus Catch and Cook, you already know where this is going. Last time I did an Octopus Catch and Cook, tried it three different ways. We did the microwave, that was terrible. Funny, but terrible. We fried it in butter. That one tasted good, but the, the texture was still way too rubbery. Then we boiled some in uh, spices. The boiled one was very tender, but the flavor wasn't very good. And we came to the conclusion that if we combine the two, if we boil it first, get the tenderness, then fry it up in butter, it should taste mwah. So that is why we gotta boil it first, then we'll break out the frying pan. 30 minutes later and we will remove the octopus from the stove and strain it. Now that the octopus is tender, we'll start the frying process. And to do that, we need Cut up some garlic, some onion, butter, olive oil, garlic, diced onions. Then we add the octopi. I'm glad I did three legs because these shrunk considerably in that boiling water. Then we'll add some salt and some pepper. We'll add some tortillas to a frying pan just to crisp them up. All right guys, funny thing, I forgot to tell you guys, we're actually making octopus tacos. And look at this, look how small of a portion we got from those three octopus legs. Those were big legs, but they shrunk probably to half their size. So we, we barely have uh, you know, enough octopus for, for two of us, but my dad's gonna make a taco first. So let me see how you make your taco. So we're gonna make a taco taco. Yes, a taco taco. Guys, in Hawaii, octopus are called taco, T-A-K-O. And so we're making taco taco. Right or should I? Mm, yeah, you can okay. stack it however you want. Yeah, you if you want to put some of those onions yeah, and uh, garlic in there some too, onions, some go for it. Just kind of like fish. I'm just going to put uh -huh, it yeah, just in there how I want it. There we go. There we go. I figured, guys, this is, we've never done this before, in case you're wondering. Give this a try. A little lettuce and some mater. I do some mayo. Yes, you love mayo. I do like the mayo. All right. Beautiful. So I made mine basically exactly like you did yours. <laughs> so we're gonna try this. We have to be honest. We can't be like, oh, let's. Oh yeah, no, no. Yeah, I'll, I'll we're one. If you guys are new to this channel, we're always one hundred percent honest with everything, yeah. from the frogs, the octopus, the fish, everything in between. Taco, taco, going down for the first time. Oh wait. Here we go. I like the first bite. Let me mm -hmm. try another one. And Not I had, bad. I had uh, octopus in there, so. Now, I do have to say, this is the best piece of octopus. This is the best octopus oh, yeah. I've ever cooked so definitely, far. Definitely, definitely. I'm oh, still yeah. not 10 out of 10 on this. I think next time I'm going to boil it for about 10 minutes more to get even more tender where it just like. Mm -hmm. I, it's good. I think it's good too. I did it. You did it. This is this is the fourth octopus sketch and cook. Mm. Guys, we only have ever cooked a few tentacles at a time. We never just throw the whole octopus in because I'm still learning. And I realized what the problem was in these past videos. I was reading recipes for cooking like Pacific octopus and different mm. ones, which are way different than just the day tacos 
that we have here in Hawaii. They're smaller and, you know, just probably, it's like anything, like the flesh of them is just different. Mm -hmm. And all the recipes I'm seeing are like Pacific octopus or maybe ones they're catching in the Atlantic or whatever. Or, mm -hmm. or Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying these recipes and going, these aren't really working out. Right. For cooking Hawaiian octopus, mm, boil for 30, good. maybe even a little bit more. I'm not sure. If boiling I'd go a little more first time, a little less the next time. Okay. Or tr take, take one tentacle out in like 25 minutes and take another one out 35 mm -hmm. minutes. So you know which one. That, but this is good. Mm -hmm. The flavor is fantastic. And the, the, the texture is really, really good. It's the best by far. Excellent. Well, guys, thank you so much for hanging out. We've got so many more Hawaii adventures coming up soon. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you in the next one. get fishing. I would like to thank my dad for putting this trip together. Oh yeah. You always put together the best trips <laughs> for us. Couldn't do it without Donovan and Chuck. So. Yeah, that's There is the lure guys. We're using just a bunch of big squid, big gnarly hooks right there. Amazing. What pound leader is that? 300. 300 pound test one. What do I do here? Guys! Guys, guys, just a few minutes in, like literally a few minutes in, we have a bite.
that doubles. You guys, we got doubles. Oh, I think this one came off too. What? Wait, he might be swimming toward us. Came off or what? I don't know if he's swimming toward us or if he came off. I think he came off. No, he's no, still he's there. On. He's on, he's on. He's on. He was just swimming straight for us. Yeah, he's swimming right there. Yeah, that's right. Leader. Okay, stop. Step back. Chuck, grab the gas bag. Grab the gas, yep. Chuck. Yep. Woo! Oh. Woo! Woohoo! Another one. Hi, Torres. Let's get Okay. Yep. Nice. <laughs> Huh? Yep. All right. Okay, that little latch. Woo! Wow! Nice! <laughs> I know, isn't that gorgeous? The deep blue water, and we're we're close to shore, guys. We're at 200, well, we're at 44 fathoms, which should be around 250 feet of water. 250 feet of water this close yeah. to shore. All right, guys, they are now reeling in the lines because they're going to switch up some lures and we're headed out to a buoy way out at sea now we've done we're done fishing around the island and ran out to a buoy and fish for some tuna and mahi mahi around there just a little lure change just putting on something smaller a little bit uh these ones are fiberglass heads i make seducer lures um now we're going for mahi and ahi sweet these are for the onos are chrome heads Tangling. Yep. All of them. Guys, we got one. Wait a second. Might have came off. Damn. I think it was a barn. I'm going to go forward. Well, guys, we lost the fish. Uh, uh, Donovan and Chuck said it was probably a marlin. So, yeah. So, well, that's the way it goes. Didn't have the right hook. That's oh, he said he didn't have a marlin. Oh, he said he didn't have a marlin hook. We have it out for mahi and tuna, so that's probably why it got off. Oh my god! Woo! Another 
another one. Oh my gosh. That is insane. Oh, just gotta, that was a double. Number four. A huge one. crazy guys because this is lead line and so it sinks so you don't even need a fishing rod you just have this big reel right here with lead fishing line and that keeps the low in the water the lure low in the water and then you can have up high the regular fishing rods so that's why we can have five lines out at once I think it's that's so oh look, look oh we got one we got one pop pop you yeah well, that was a crazy uh, coincidence. Sitting there explaining the reel. Guys, check this out. It's like a great big rattle trap. I mean, huge rattle trap. You say the hookup ratio isn't very good on this one, Chuck? Nah. It's, it's been hit twice, but we, it's gotten off both times. Yeah. You're gonna switch it out? Yeah. He's gonna switch out the rattle trap for that beauty right there. That is so cool. I love this. This is a blast. So to all the bass fishermen out there, you know when you're feeling bad to the bone, using that big one ounce rattle trap, catching the big bass, try a one pound rattle trap. That's... Guys, we got something small. Did you say something small, Chuck? I think so. I think it took it from you. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Something hit it so hard, guys, it turned the bait around. That's crazy. Woo! We got one, boys. Good. Great. Get on it. Get on Way in, Pops. You're doing great. <laughs> I know it's hard. It's way harder than it looks, isn't it? Oh yeah, because you're left handed. Oh yeah. You all right? Yeah, I can see leader, Pops. Just a few more feet. Just a few more feet. Yes, sir. I'll open up the cooler. All right. come around this point out here it's really good spot guys we're on again got another bite we're on Him. Nice. Oh, nice! Look at that beautiful fish! Oh my gosh! Let him settle down nice. a second. Nice! That's three species on the day. Species on the day. We missed the marlin. Yeah, we missed a marlin.
What is the most Ono you guys have ever caught in a day, or like m m m highest number of Ono? Uh, my best day was on the Big Island, and um, I'm not the sure. You done. Not exactly sure how many we got, but we got probably 30 or 40 of them. Wow. I got the deal. Go ahead. I'm gonna slice this yep. way so yep. just yeah, stand back. Beautiful big mm. steaks and oh wow. no. <laughs> Is that a good good eating fish too, that tuna? Yeah. The local guys like that one because it's they like the fishy tasting fish. Gotcha. They don't like mahi mahi because it's more mainland style fish, yeah. They like the real fishy taste. They eat fish for the fish taste. Yeah. That's so cool. And then guys, we're gonna take this little guy home and these make fantastic bait. We'll probably sample him too. We'll probably, probably try tasting him. But we're gonna take him home and this, the flesh of this fish is really oily. And we're gonna try him in a bait, so stay tuned, uh, try him as bait. So stay tuned for that episode. Donovan, thank you so much. Like your rides here, buddy. I appreciate it. Good day. Hey, I'll, tell, I'll text you guys when the video's up. Chuck, sure. thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Have a good day. Yeah, let us know. I want to watch it. Yes, I will. Guys, what a day. What a fabulous day of fishing. That is the best day of trolling I've ever had. I've gone out trolling like that several times and just, we haven't had much luck. In fact, last time we went out, we caught zero fish in like a nine hour trip. So to go out and catch that many fish was just amazing. Now, we got to cook some up. So I came out here on the roof of our condo because they have this sweet little party spot right up here and nobody's up here right now. Check out that view. Amazing. And right over here we have grills. And then right over here we have this sweet little kitchen spot where we can prepare the fish. I'm going to prepare both of these fillets by cooking them in foil on the grill. This is the Ono, and then the thin piece is the Mahi Mahi. I've actually put each fillet in its own like little boat here so that uh, we don't, you know, mix the flavors. We can taste each fish how it's going to be. We're going to put some butter, real butter, whipped butter, right on there. Then douse some little olive oil. Then some rosemary, then salt, minced garlic, and finally some basil leaf crumbles. That should do it for now. Oh wait, I almost forgot. The most important part, one of the most important parts, some lemon over this. Good amount on each fish. Put some lemon slices in there as well. And look at that guys, we got some beautiful fish. Now let's make this up into a little boat. Make sure we seal it up good to get seal in all the flavors. To a flaming grill we will add both of the fish and close that tight. And now we wait. Alright, let's check this out. Oh. Is it done? Oh man, guys, I cannot, I wish I could transmit smell through the camera. I cannot this smells amazing and the fish is cooked through oh guys look at that say a quick prayer for this amazing blessed day so many cool things guys we didn't even i didn't have the camera out for this one part we saw pilot whales didn't even know that was a thing we saw dolphins flying fish just so many beautiful animals out there and of course all the fish that we caught all right here we go. I'm going to try the Ono first, or the Wahoo. Wahoo! 
How did they come up with that name? Wahoo? Here we go. Mm. Guys. The fish is so good. And then that combination of spices on it. I think I'm getting... I can honestly say this. I think I'm getting better and better at cooking. Alright, so if I can take a moment to brag on myself here. Look at even how good that looks. That, the, the with the, the color combination of spices right there. Let's try the mahi mahi. Way different texture than the wahoo. And the wahoo is like steak. It's like thick. And the mahi mahi is like really very flaky. So if you ask me which one I like better, I would have to say the Ono. The Ono is much better with this particular combination of spices. I'm going to have to bring some to my old man later because some of you are probably wondering where he is, but we got that boat and he was tired and he was like, I need a nap. So he crashed. He's probably going to be out for like two hours. So that's where he is. I'm not going to worry about him for right now. I'm just going to cook for me. Well, guys, thank you so much for hanging out today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Well, we got a turtle. We're launching our kayak here. We have a turtle just, just swam right in front of us here. <laughs> well, he's just cruising around. <laughs> That's funny. Let's go. What is going on, guys? out on the kayak with me ancient we're back in hawaii today we are doing some crabbing we have three crab traps we have tuna that is from our deep sea fishing trip if you guys watched that episode my dad caught this really small type of tuna that was really oily and the guys said it was great for bait so we cooked up all the other fish but we took the tuna home to use for bait so we have nice chunks of that in the crab trap and so we're going to put three of these traps down and let's see what happens All right, this trap does not have a GoPro. We're just gonna throw it down there. It has the same bait, it has tuna in it. And trap number three, the nice piece of tuna right in the middle. No GoPro on this one either. So now that we have all three traps down, I actually have here a little bait. While we're waiting for the crabs to get in there, I have this, check out this little piece of octopus there. Nice little strip of tentacle. And we're gonna troll this around some buoys coming up here. Throw that out behind us. We might have something really tiny on. Huh? Oh, I got something. Yeah, I have something. It just wasn't fighting. First fish of the day, just a minute or two down there. Oh, it's a lizard fish. A little lizard fish. They have this giant mouth, all kinds of teeth. And they bury down in, down in the sand really, like they can bury in a second, be down in the sand. And they keep those two little eyes that are on top sticking out of the sand and then just attack things that go by. So, well, first catch of the day. Those buoys right over there, those are what we fish around. A lot of times there are schools of uh, the of trevally that hang out around the buoys. There we go, guy. You're free. There he goes. Got him. Got one. It's not very big, but we got one. I see silver. Oh, look, a whole bunch of them following. Oh, guys, there's a whole bunch of, there's a whole school of these guys. Like uh-huh. <laughs> All right, well, this one is probably too small to keep. They have to be 10 inches. Oh, get in here. Whoa. Guys, check that beautiful little fish out. This is a papil, as the locals call them. Uh, a small trevally, and they need to be 10 inches. This guy's probably like seven or eight. All right, we're getting into a couple while the crab traps are down there. wonder how those are doing. All right, guys. So I had so much fun making this video because I learned a lot about what goes on underwater in the crab traps. Now, I've put um, cameras in crab traps before uh, in Hawaii, but I 
didn't really get a lot of action. This day, it was action-packed. So first, we have a Kona Crab, which all by itself is just a cool crab. Probably one, I think it's the coolest crab in creation, to be honest. It is a weird, bugling crab. You'll see it up close in a second. So he goes up to the trap, but he doesn't hop in. He's, like, hesitant. And then you see in the back there, there comes another crab. And I did not know I had crabs that would come up to a crab trap with fresh um, bonito in it and then turn around and run away. I did not know that, 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 that they even did that, that they'd be scared of the trap. So it made me, um, one of the things I learned is maybe get a little bit more subtle trap, maybe that lays flatter on the bottom. You see the little squirt um, running around there, and he's hesitant too. And I thought all the crabs, you know, if there were crabs in the area, they would run right over and, uh, and jump in. But nay, nay. You see a flounder there. See the flounder in the back? So we had a lot of flounder on this day. Here comes another one. But again, nothing is getting in the trap at first. And this little guy, look, he's, he and the flounder are both hanging out. It's, it's like he's, if it moves a lot, they're, they're really scared of it. And one of the theories I have is you can see based on how everything's moving that uh, there's, there are quite a few, uh, there were quite a few waves this day. And I wonder if the bouncing of the waves made them all a little bit hesitant. Now right here you see him plunging, but even he, this guy's tricky, goes right under it. And he knows what's up. And he's too small to keep anyway, so I wasn't really uh, concerned about ones this size. But he has the whole, one, once he committed, he had the whole buffet to himself there. Probably had never experienced anything like that. And this is crazy. He actually ate for about five minutes and then was done trying to figure out how to get out. He was all tangled up, so he's a little bit confused there. But he ate his fill and then left the trap. I did not know that they would do that either. So he pulled it up, and that was the first lesson to take away from this. So we added another piece of bait to it because we thought we weren't attracting any crabs. Little did we know that there were actually tons of crabs around it down there. Attracting them wasn't the problem. Um, but we did add another piece of bait just for extra scent there. It's so beautiful under there. It's about as beautiful underneath the water as it is above it. And here you see something cruising, something coming right for us. There's a big puffer fish cruising around. So that was really cool. And then we had to move the trap. You see a little crab running by there and a couple of flounder chasing around. We had to move the trap, though, because these people kept coming over and, and messing with it. Um, and so we have this type of crab here. He was not shy at all about getting in the trap. And in fact, if a local could tell me what kind of crab this is, that would be greatly appreciated. I've never known what the name of this crab is. But he hops right in. But then this is funny. When I was first watching this, he goes right past the bait. And I'm like, uh, dude, the, turn around, the, the bait's right there. But he has a face-off with another crab. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't know, you know, they disappeared for a second, but I'm not mistaken, I think the other crab chased him out. So they're all struggling to, uh, to the, fight in the current. But this guy finally hops on, and, uh, the other one was, was flexing and trying to scare him off, but this guy, uh, the one in the middle there was dominant. And, uh, he hopped on the the bonito there, and the other one <laughs> slinks away in defeat. I love how they hop right on it. Can you imagine like jumping on a hundred pound steak? That that's like the portion. That's like the size of portion. If like one of us jumped on a hundred pound steak and just started digging in, that's what it's like to these crabs. And uh, then right here, somebody again starts messing with our trap. Like people on paddle boards would be paddling by. And they would grab the traps, and we'd even have them labeled. We had, the, we wrote on the side, do not touch. And people, like, grabbing the traps, like, oh, what's this? Start pulling them up. It was very frustrating. And so, the, fortunately, the guy let it back down. But that was happening all day long, even after we after we labeled the, the traps. So, here, big old bonefish cruising by. We were in the right area to fish, that's for sure. And then some bar jacks come swimming by. That is so cool. All right, here we are, guys. Trap number three. <laughs> Whoa, trap number three felt heavy. Like, seriously heavy, and now it feels light, though. Like, it, there was definitely something. Wait, 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 what? Oh, we have a Kona crab. Hi. I have not caught a Kona crab in years. Oh, guys, cool. 
Excellent. And there must have been something else more because it was, it was really heavy. Like, I thought it was snagged on the bottom. That's how heavy it felt. So we'll get it right back down there. Guys, wait till you see this crab. You can only keep males that are four inches you know, shell length. Put them in the bag. There we go. Guys, look at this crazy crab. This is called a Kona crab. At least that's what they call them here in Hawaii. I think in other like Asian countries they call them something different. And I was just bemoaning the fact that I've not caught one of these in years out here. And so anyway, we're going to take this. Oh, I, I didn't, didn't bring something to measure. Like he's all like dirty on top. We're going to bring something to measure him. And because uh, it is a male, they have to be four inches from here to here. We're going to measure him at home and see if he's big enough. All right, guys, so we measured our little crab here. He is not four inches, so we are going to let him go. And, oh, he's under the kayak. Anyway, we <laughs> not quite big enough. Hopefully, we'll get a big one of those. It has been years since I've caught one of those bad boys. We just got a bunch of fresh bait and everything, and we are ready to drop the traps right back down there. So we actually took about an hour break uh, for lunch, and then got the fresh bait and everything and moved the traps about 100 yards down shore and immediately you can see quite a bit more action around this area. We've got the little, uh, some, some jacks swimming around there and some goat fish right away. And then you can see in the distance, see the little crab? Booking it right for the crab trap. Another Kona crab. This is just, man, I, I cannot believe I could have caught so many Kona crabs this day, but I was waiting like 30, 45 minutes, maybe an hour even sometimes between checking the traps. And I didn't know that, you know, basically within minutes of dropping the trap down, there were usually crabs in it. This guy had a hard time, uh, hard time getting in, but he finally gets on and he just starts going to town on this thing. The flesh of that fish was really soft, so super easy for them to eat. Just starts chowing down. It's kind of funny because he's trying to bury himself in the sand too as he's eating. And then it's amazing how, uh, gosh, you, you move a little bit down the beach and there's just so many more fish. It, you you can, you can, it's just a lesson too for fishermen. If you're in an area and you're fishing from the beach, move like a hundred yards down. Check out that big flounder in the back. Just move like a hundred yards down and there are going to be so many more fish in an area. Just, just moving down a ways. And it's really easy, especially on the beach, just to walk down. So that was a lesson also that I took away from this because there's so much more life in front of this beach here. And then it was the same thing again. I should have I should have checked the traps like every 15 minutes or so. This guy ate his fill and then takes off. And then you can see in the distance here, again, another one making his way toward the trap. And this is really disappointing because this one, uh, has, I think this one is the biggest one of the day right here. So it comes up, and no hesitation. Rawr! I feel like these, these crabs need to make some sort of noise. Just grabs hold and starts chowing down as well. So this is about at like the 20 minute mark um, this crab came in. And I so there was, it was kind of interesting, one at a time kind of, they took turns almost coming in. So he chows down as well. I think that that one's probably a keeper right there. And in fact, that's a male, I can tell by the tail on the back. Eats his fill and takes off. And then something really funny happens here. So watch right there. A crab, another crab comes out of the sand and starts running down that one. And they have a little face off here. It looks like the other one punches him. Bam. It looks like the other crab just punched him and then runs off. <laughs> like, is that, is that not the funniest thing? Like, he just punches and it looks like the other one just buries himself. So I don't, that was the... I, the crabs are always having these little face-offs down there, I'm learning. And this is a fish that's called a leatherback. It actually has leathery skin that you can make lures out of. He swims around a couple times. And we have a big bonefish here, checking it out. Having the scent and, like, the little pieces of all the, the, the fish in the trap kind of swirling around attracted a lot of fish as well. And then the same thing again happens right here. You see another crab running in the distance, but this one is funny because he had this little entourage of um, little jacks following him, little, I think the coin's called Omelu, Omelu, fish, and then the goat fish come in, but he has this entourage of, of fish following him. I think if they were bigger, they would have eaten him up, but he runs toward the trap. Same thing again, and I'm pretty pretty sure th this is one of the biggest ones of the day right here. In fact, now that I look at it, yeah, that was pretty much the biggest one. And, and look how he just tears into this thing. Just no, I mean, this dude is hungry. 
and not to give it away, but I, I did not pull up the trap. But it was just amazing how ferocious these things were. And so you can see he eats all the meat off. There's just the skin with a little bit of meat, but he eats most of the meat off, has his fill. He's kind of slowing down. And uh, last couple pieces there. And then he turns around and heads off as well. And that was the biggest one. That one looks like it might be a female, though, so I don't know if he would have been able to keep that. But definitely learned my lesson to pull up the traps sooner. Guys, I think it was a fish must have been messing with this because we have no crab and the bait's pretty ravaged. We're going to put another piece of bait on and get it back down there. My uh, my boat captain is going to pull up one now. I'm, I've just been the skipper. Does it feel heavy? Nope. Ah, shoot. Nothing. Ravaged. Yeah, it looks yeah, something's yeah. definitely been on it though. And that might be a crab. The way yeah, it's the way it's torn out. Yeah, it's like torn out of there. Yeah. Should we drop it right back down? Sure. Maybe he was just under the bait. Guys, sometimes the crab trap lays on the bottom, and the crabs come up from underneath it, which is kind of a, a draw drawback of these traps. But we don't. You can't really transport crab pots. We can't put them like in our luggage. Those are the only like fold up kinds I can. Those are the only kind I can transport. So it's unfortunate, but uh, we'll get them back down there. We're going to throw out a casting lure, guys. Just cast around. You never know. We're just, just cra alternately crabbing and fishing. This is fun. Guys, guys, we just hooked up. I didn't even have my camera on. Something big just crushed the spoon. Oh, now he's coming kind of toward us. Doesn't feel... He's still on. Yeah. He's swimming right toward us. This is nice. But, what do we have? Oh my gosh, oh, it's it's a diamond trevally. Yes, it it's a di are you oh, kidding me? Beautiful. Do you have your underwater camera you want me to put it on? <gasps> oh that's gorgeous. Look at that guys! A diamond trevally! Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? Look at that fish, guys! <laughs> oh Asa, we're gonna eat good. If you want to eat it. Oh man, I don't know if I can eat this guy. I know I could. <laughs> wow. Oh, this fish. Guys, all right, we're gonna get him in the boat. Nice. Are you kidding? I cannot believe I just caught. Oh, look, but he just coughed up a, a tiny octopus. No way. Let he just see. coughed up a tiny. Oh my gosh. Look Guys, at that. Save that for bait. We're gonna save this for bait. <laughs> Guys, look, he just coughed up a baby octopus right there. And you had that thread of his octopus. Yes, and I had a tiny piece of octopus on the back of my bait. Holy mackerel. Okay, so we're going to save that for later. Yeah, he's got more baby octopus in his stomach. You're going to let him go, aren't you? Uh, yeah, Pops, that's, I mean, can we yeah. keep a fish? I, I had a Hawaiian guy one time tell me after I caught one of these in another video, he said those aren't, those aren't very common. So we're going to let him go. Wow. Too pretty to keep. Look at that. Look at those fins. <laughs> well, I know the fins. Are, we're going to stick them underwater in just a second. You guys can see these fins. Wow. What a day. That's guys, that is why you come out here. And you know, sometimes it's boring, sometimes you don't catch fish. But so many times crazy things happen like getting a tiny baby octopus. You know what we're gonna do with this octopus, guys? We are going to put it on the hook. That's money, I'm telling that you. That is money. <laughs> that is a money bait right there. Alright, now my dad's gonna throw out the bait. I'm gonna paddle. We're gonna keep trolling. Is that a fish? Can't tell. Oh, yeah, that, no, that might be the rope. I can't tell, so. Is there something? Uh, if it is, if it is uh, rope, it's trailing off. Otherwise, yeah, it's like one of those needlefish. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, guys, 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 oh, guys, guys, guys you just cast out there and we're just reeling in. I didn't even, I forgot my camera was even on. Guys, uh, on the spoon again. Yep, yep, tip for that octopus. Uh-huh, with that, that baby octopus. Oh this is a trevally, I'm telling you right now, this is a good All right, one. I gotta put, guys, we were bringing in the crab traps all the line in um uh almost making a run what is that wait i think it might be a, a hound fish oh no oh it's oh, not a trevally <laughs> good eating no shoot. oh shoot that's all right we can try eating a hound oh look poor man's marlin uh-huh oh it's a huge oh look you kind of snagged it oh, or it must have come snag. out 
while he was trying to yeah. slash oh, it. Oh, look at that. That is cool. Oh, that is okay. cool. Yeah. Oh, there he goes. Oh. That is cool though, Pops. That is huge. That is a big one. Woo! Guys, look at those savage teeth. Pops, what a <laughs> fish. What a Wait, day. Hold on, just wait. Oh. oh, yeah, careful those. You know those yeah, are yeah. dang sharp. Look at him, he's wanting to bite somebody. Ah, oh, that is cool. Whoa. Whoa, sorry. Get that out of there. Move the pliers. Jeez. Look, look, he's trying to bite you. He's, he's trying to get <laughs> after me, man. <laughs> Yo, get the pliers. Yeah, yeah. please. <laughs> wow. There you go. Okay. Oh, he is, he's trying I mean, to turn. Oh, yeah, he's trying he to is, turn to he bite. He is turning, yeah. He's... I was going to get in the water with him and to release him, get a cool uh, okay. underwater okay. release, but I don't think... Okay, get, well, let me let it... Okay. Oh. Uh, no, that yeah, is that, cool. That's a good shot. Huh? That is cool. There we, there we go. Look at that nasty dude. Pops, <laughs> nice fish. Look at the teeth. That, that is cool. <laughs> Oh, that is so fun. Well guys, a day of fishing and crabbing does not get any better than that. Maybe if we got a keeper crab and we could eat some fresh crab right now, that would have been better, but we are not ungrateful. <laughs> that was fantastic. Thank you guys so much for hanging out, and we will see you in the next adventure. What is going on, guys? Welcome to another beautiful Hawaii episode. Check that view out right there. Gorgeous, gorgeous. We moved to a different spot on the island because my dad wanted to. <laughs> and, uh, and so I said, I'll go with you, twist my arm. And so we're on this side of the island, we're actually gonna be making some videos. Uh, on this side of the island, we're on the west side now. And so I've actually never kayak fished, never really fished at all off this side. First order of business is for us to go out and we're gonna try to catch some octopus. Cause we need octopus for bait. And uh, then we'll have that. And next step is fishing. But first, we're gonna go down to those rocks down there, see if there are any octopus. This here is called a pillow cushion starfish. Such a cool starfish. Find these a lot in Hawaii. Um, listen to these whales, guys. This is the loudest I'd ever heard whales singing while I was out snorkeling. never heard such a variety of noises from whales before that was that was really cool uh, here we have a school of baby goat fish on top and all the fish on the bottom are called a kule and so I wanted to dive down and see if I could get among all the schooling fish So 
when we're octopus hunting, we just swim along and we're just scanning the bottom constantly, looking for uh, the heads of the octopus to be looking out from little caves and little holes in the rocks, and you'll see their great big eyes looking out at you. Uh, but they're always hiding, almost always hiding. And uh, just comb along the bottom, you can see things sometimes that maybe look like an octopus at first glance. Uh, and then my dad finds this lobster tail from a molted lobster, and so we got really excited about that because that means that uh, there are lobster in the area. Now, they don't come out in the day a lot, but uh, there are lobster in the area, so I started swimming around, and you can see there are a lot of good caves and crevices and stuff for lobster to be hanging out, so we kept our eyes on, uh, kept our eyes open for lobster and octopus. So back in this cave, I see something, trumpet fish back in the very corner, but uh, a couple people lost some fins. They weren't matching, but those are some expensive fins to be losing, so I recovered those. That's one of the coolest things about snorkeling, uh, is even if you've been to a spot before, you never know what you're going to find. You never know if new creatures have moved in on the reef that you're going to discover. And especially when you get down, you know, kind of close, you start looking in caves and holes and stuff. You find lobster, octopus, you can find things that people lost. And it's so cool how it's different every single time, even when you snorkel reefs that you've already snorkeled before. Like right here, I saw the glint of something in the sand, and it was a ring. Now granted, it was just a cheap little toe ring, but still, it was kind of cool find. We did not get any octopus on this particular venture, but that just means we have to try again. All right, my friends. So we snorkeled this morning to no octopus avail, but uh, a couple hours have gone by now. We ate lunch, we did some other things, but uh, we need to get some for today, or we need to get some so we can at least fish tomorrow morning. So we're gonna head out again. Um, it still hasn't, it's still, it's still perfectly clear <laughs> out here and uh, should be good, should be nice and clear. And we're gonna try some rocks. We've never really octopus hunted straight out at this part. Uh, this coral is kind of sparse, but we're gonna see if there's anything. So with just a couple hours left of daylight, Mieh and I set out on this new stretch of reef. Like I said, pretty sparse, but uh, we really wanted some octopus. Listen to these whales here. I don't know about you guys, but it sounds like they're having a good old time out there. <laughs> I spotted an octopus here. We were only out there for about 10 minutes. And I see one in this little hole here. Look, notice the sand. See how he pushed the sand out and made a little den for himself right up under there? I could see his head poking out a moment before, and that's how I spotted him. So I signaled to my dad that he was in there. My dad had the spear. All you have to do is just poke him a little bit. You don't even have to, like, pierce their skin with a spear. You just poke him a little bit, and they come right out. No problemo. And this was definitely a keeper. In Hawaii, they have to be over one pound in weight to keep. As my dad was trying to get him uh, get him in the back, he almost got away and I grabbed him. <laughs> nice little catch there. All that stuff they're squirting out is the ink, and they use that to try to get away, to try to fool predators. He was... Went right in the bag pretty easy, and it was a great catch. Exactly what we wanted. <laughs> yes. Oh uh -huh. my gosh. I saw the top that's of his a, head. That's one of the better ones we got this trip. Yes, yeah, sir. Woohoo! I thought it was two at first. <laughs> wow. Yes. Always satisfying when a hunt comes together. And actually on the way back in, I spot this Trevally, and this is the exact fish that we're going for tomorrow. So that was encouraging to see. It's a little yellow spotted Trevally swimming around. So that was a good sign. And just so many, such a huge variety of fish swimming around, even on kind of the, the sparse reef areas where it's just rock, mostly rock. Uh, still so many fish swimming around. That was so cool to see. Alright guys, 
guys fresh catch of the day. I'm gonna go rinse it oh. off a minute. All right. He actually escaped out of the bait bag. That is the first time, and it was sealed. And he still, I don't know how he did it, but he escaped out of the bait bag. Just really weird, that's a beautiful one. That's, a good one. It, that's definitely over a pound. Oh yeah. Guys, it's kind of like a when you tournament fish a lot, and you know, you know right away if the bass is over 12 inches or anything, because you're used to seeing it. So, I ain't gonna drop them in there. Sweet. Good, good morning, everybody. Gorgeous, gorgeous morning out here. Man, water conditions are looking most excellent. There's a little breeze on the water, little breeze, but nothing that the kayak can't handle. As long as it doesn't get any more windy than this. We have had some wind on this side of the island the last few days, but uh, it's looking very, very passable out there for our kayak. Just have to do a little bit more paddling, but I'm super excited to be fishing this side of the island for the first time. Might be some brand new fish that we've never caught on my channel. Should be fun. Let's just, uh, in fact, let's go check on our octopus, make sure everything is good there first. My dad's cutting up the octopus. Yeah. <laughs> Looking good. Uh, I didn't <clears throat> quite freeze it uh, right. I should have uh, put it, spent a little bit more time. We tried not to get it balled up like that, but apparently it all balled up after I put it in the freezer because I did spread it all out. That is what we don't want, guys, is a big chunk of octopus. Normally we uh, we spread them out in the freezer, but it'll be fine. We still have good chunks here, good chunks of leg meat <laughs> there. And uh, So well, let's get out there and uh, let's get fish. You ready? Yes, sir. First line, it's a little spinner or a little spoon. We'll see if we can get anything on that while we're going to our spot. All right, guys, we have a piece of octopus. A little cloud has come over us and it's gotten windy out here, <laughs> but at least we're way out here. We got a piece of octopus there on a circle hook. First time dropping on the west side of Maui. Guys, my dad, whoa. Using a big chunk of octopus there. Gonna hang it in about middle column of the water there. Sweet. Let's see what happens. Get a big ulua. Fish on. Fish on? On the drop. Seriously? Yep. On the drop. Good net. Guys, my dad has a fish already. Got it on the drop, must have. Uh huh. Oh, it's a lizard oh, fish. Somebody was telling me that those are good Ulua bait. Really? Mm -hmm. Throw them in the bag, huh? <laughs> but not the one we're looking not for. Not what we're looking for. Cool, though. Yeah. Gosh, that was an ambitious fish to yes, go after that was. piece of bait. Yes, it was. All right, my friends. So from this point on in the video, I have to do a voiceover because the wind started howling, as you can tell. Fish on, by the way. Wind started howling, and so I had to put my uh, GoPros either in underwater cases or take the external microphones off because if salt water droplets get on microphones, it corrodes them. Had to learn that the hard way. So we had to put all of like the fancy equipment away and just have GoPros mounted, which means the wind noise was awful. But I hooked up on the first decent fish of the day. It's a huma huma nuka nuka apua'a or a trigger fish, and this particular variety is called a lagoon trigger fish. There are over 40 different types of trigger fish, so you never know what type you're gonna bring up. Gorgeous, gorgeous fish. They pull really hard too. And it was interesting that my dad and I started to get bites right as the wind picked up, because as soon as I released that trigger fish before I could get the cameras set down there, my dad hooks up on a fish. What are you, I see something, oh, it's a big, there are other ones following, guys. Woo! Oh, we're getting into some cool reef fish. Oh, well, that's a pretty one. Isn't that that is gorgeous. And this is a trigger fish as well. It's just a different variety, uh, black with some dark blue markings on it. Uh, and if you're new to my channel, they're called trigger fish because they have that uh, little trigger on top there. 
really really cool fish but as we're releasing this one check out all the fish right underneath our kayak and we did not see most of these because remember from the surface the water was all churned up all stirred up because of the wind but a ton of fish swimming under our kayak and you see one of them taken off right toward the surface toward my dad my dad had his bait hanging over the side So he had his bait hanging over the side, and one of the trevally jumped on it. So we had a school of trevally kind of following our kayak around, and uh, so my dad dropped his bait right back down there, not holding the camera very well, but remembered that from our angle up there, we, we can see the blackfish pretty well, but all the other fish are, are pretty uh, obscure to us because of the, just the reflection off the water of the sun and everything. So I'm just kind of holding the camera down there blindly. So we had no idea that this many fish were underneath our kayak. So our strategy was we're, we're just gonna paddle along with the baits hanging over the side and wait for them to jump on. And sure enough, my dad hooks up on another one. Check out how the Trevally, they're trying to steal the octopus from the other one. Look at him. Bam, just trying to rip the octopus out of the mouth of the other Trevally. That is so cool. We needed to put some double, heck, some triple, maybe some quadruple rigs on. You could hook up on a bunch of those. Woohoo! Alright, that's a keeper. Guys, I'd be over 10 inches to keep. Oh, yeah, that's a good foot. Nice. Nice, Pops. So while we were admiring the fish, I suddenly started to get a bite because, of course, the other ones probably swam over to my bait next. Yeah, I'm getting a bite. I'm getting a bite. Got it. All right, boy, I got it. <laughs> This is fun. This was really fun. Fast action. It's exactly what we are hoping for by catching those fresh octopus. Because those, the trevally are pretty, um, how'd you put it? They're, they're just kind of picky. They're a picky fish. They want fresh bait. Oh, there's a yellow spot. I have a yellow spot. One of the best tasting fish on the reef right there, folks. Nice. Yellow spotted papillo, because you see those little yellow spots on the side. A lot of different varieties of those as well. Probably at least a dozen different varieties that I could think of. So we threw them in the fish bag. <laughs> it's so fun when the plan comes together. So we're just paddling along again. They wanted it moving. We didn't notice for a second that we even had one there. And uh, it was pretty fast action once we got into this area. Um, catching a little goat fish there. This is a red goat fish. Like I say, that wind picking up, all of a sudden, we were just, it was, it was fish, we were getting bites, if three minutes went by and we didn't get a bite, we were suspicious that something, or that our bait was gone. Really difficult paddling against the wind, trying to keep us on our spot that we had found, but uh, the effort was worth it. Big, big fish right here, folks. At least that's... That's what it appeared at first. Observe the fight that this fish is giving up. And then observe the size of the fish, the, the, the comparable size of the fish that I pull up. We almost had doubles right there again. Oh, we just got away. They are, I mean, smallmouth have nothing on a trevally. And I thought smallmouth fought hard. Yes! Yes! Oh! Is it just me, or does that look like kind of a, a hybrid between a bar jack and a yellow spotted trevally? I think a lot of them kind of interbreed down there, so you have the kind of some hybrids going on. That, that definitely, it doesn't look like a full on bar jack, but doesn't look like a full on yellow spot either. Fish bag is getting full! Yeah. Woo! That's an octopus. It's dynamite. And it was just the same formula as before. We had this little underwater point we had found, and so we just kept paddling hard against the wind, and every time we'd get right over top of it, we'd get a fish. Nice. This dude was all by himself, and it's interesting because this is our first omelu of the day. 
He has little blue spots on him. It's still a Trevally, just a different variety. Another keeper. Oh, that's an Omelu. That is beautiful. That's an Omelu. That's the keeper. Nice! Look at that. Beautiful! Oh Filling up the fish bag, boy! We have one more piece of bait left. I think. Yep. And then we'll be done. Last piece of the day, guys. Thought I hooked up on something big here. Turned out to be the old Rockasaurus. They're pretty common in these parts. Lost the last piece of bait, but we were not unhappy with the day. I'm very grateful to be able to do stuff like this with my dad. This is definitely a, uh, a memorable day. Going down to the lower level. All right guys, so we're back in the hotel and uh, we're gonna give away these fish. We're not gonna cook today because we're coming to the near the end of our trip. And uh, we thought it build build the goodwill with the people uh, here, and um, we just don't need any more fish. We have a lot of food to eat to the end of our trip. So. Excuse me. Um, my dad and I just got done kayak fishing, but we're coming to the end of our trip. We we're wondering, would you guys like any papillo? Oh, bro. bro! Are you messing around right now? No, I'm not messing around. See, so we're coming to the end of our trip and we have to eat all the stuff out of our refrigerator, stuff like that, and, and just be done. Where'd you guys cut this from? Right out in front, right by the boats that anchor up there. We were just kayak fishing this morning. It was the first time I ever kayak fishing yeah. out there. So, Do you want it? Do you guys have a refrigerator or something? We got a really? fridge. Why? You like, I take half. I take half. If you like some too. Look cool. And if you don't have Ziploc bags, I need Ziploc bags for you as far as keeping them in the fridge. Yeah, we just we just caught them, like we just got done catching them. Oh, no, just no, just giving it to you. We're coming to the end of our trip, so we're not going to eat them. Okay. We've eaten a bunch of them and and and. Take care of them, bro. Oh, they... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love I love fish too. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you have Ziploc, I didn't think about bringing Ziploc bags, but yeah, if yeah. you had a refrigerator or something, I yeah. get. Okay. okay. Sounds good. <laughs> We're going to have to fight for the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Okay. Are you guys leaving today? Uh, no, we're leaving to, or, uh, in a, a day or two. Uh, okay. Let's see, it's Wednesday. We're still. All right. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Right, well, have a good day. Thank you.